What's up, guys? Uh, got a really good conversation today. Um, got Nick and Zach Gallagher on the pod. And we are going to be diving into like everything. We talked earlier about what we should talk about. We're definitely going to hit KWC. We're going to talk about our partnership, the Lotus team. Um, we're going to talk about uh, what they've been up to content-wise. I posted on my Instagram uh, to ask me to have me ask them questions. And I got a lot of good questions. We'll talk about meat, of course. Um, <laughs> and, uh, oh, we'll probably also talk about Taki and Ryoga. I think that's a must every conversation. Talk about the Japanese legends. So welcome to the pod. Yeah. Happy to be here, guys. Excited for this discussion. Yeah. And I know I intro that, but I don't know if you guys are going to have this for your pod too, but whatever. It's This is a collaboration. This is a partnership, right? Yeah, it's all good. All right, uh, I think we should start off with KWC. Is that cool? Yeah, so definitely. I, to do it. I, I just got home last week. You guys are still... Nick's in Japan, Zach's in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. But I think we're still kind of feeling the after effects of uh, what went down. Um, I don't know where to start first. Maybe just with Ryoga. Yeah, I think we can yeah. start with the yeah with the results. I mean, what what yeah. what went down, you know? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ryoga took first uh, with a thousand nine hundred seventy three points. I mean, that is like <laughs> that is insane. Yeah. Um. And and I actually and we can talk, we can talk about that in a sec too. I, but a couple things. You know, for this year, I I, I took a look at the past couple of years in the finals, and um, the the representation of Japanese players in the finals and the USA people in the finals has actually been semi consistent in the past. Like even every every in person can't have seen since two thousand sixteen. Like half I, and I half? used to, I used to think it was like okay, USA is is you know dominating really the most of the leaderboard and now Jap Japanese are like edging their way in. Um but actually isn't really like it well, hasn't been like that. So like every every two thousand every in person KWC, so in person, so not not online. And I don't count 2022 as it uh even though it was in person because it wasn't really like probably like grand total of four foreigners once that event. Okay, um yeah. but 2016 like in the finals it was 12 12 U 12 Japanese people, 10 10 from the USA. And then the rest of the people were foreigners. So that's 22 between the US Japan and Irish foreigners. 2017, this is the most amount the USA has ever had. 13 USA, 16 Japanese. 2018, this is when you start to see the decline. 9 USA, 19 Japanese. 2019, 7 USA, 21 Japanese. 2023, that's the least ever last year, 6 USA, 26 Japanese. And then this year was 7 USA, 25 Japanese. And the difference between first place and third place this year was... Over six hundred points, which is ridiculous. How does that compare? Is, was there any? Was there ever like that drastic of a difference? Uh, what about Tokyo winning the last few years? Like, what was his difference? I mean, the difference in twenty twenty two was insane. Like, uh, but yeah, yeah. So like twenty twenty two, Taki got two thousand points, um, and then So got like twelve hundred points. Wow, uh, so that yeah, was that's a domination, dude. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh he could have probably stopped like forty five seconds earlier, you know, <laughs> yeah. probably like a minute earlier and still won, which is <laughs> crazy. Um, but yeah, it's absolutely domination. Other than that, no, there's definitely never been that. I don't think there's ever been that much of a discrepancy in, in points. But I mean, it, it really just goes to show, like everybody this year. I mean, there's a lot of thousands, eleven hundreds, but I mean, then you see Ryoga in Tokyo, like Ryoga hits full marks, nineteen hundred points. You know, no yeah. one even. Uh, no one was going to be hitting that consistently. Uh, even the people projected higher than him were. I mean, I, I can't say this for a fact, but I really doubt they had that. That just, it was just Yasu. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, and you know, I, I can't speak for Yasu, but I, I know I saw Ryoga hit his final run in person in front of my face like probably ten times before the event. So yeah, um, this, this will speak <laughs> to his consistency. Um, but but yeah, I mean, Ryoga won. I mean, what did you guys? What did you guys think going into it? Do you guys think he was going to win? 
Ryoga? I, or was it like a toss-up? Yeah. Well, I after seeing Ryoga in person, I definitely think he had a great I, I just felt like something was gonna happen, something special was gonna happen. You know, there's it's hard to bet against a guy who can do his final run, two K points in front of you most of the time. And in just the most random situations, Zach and I were out with dinner, <laughs> out having dinner with Ryoga and his mom and a couple other of his friends. And then after sitting down for an hour and a half, we get out into the main part of the mall and he's like, guys, let's just do final runs right now. I'm like, okay, we'll just watch you. And then he gets, and then he doesn't, he, he gets all the way to his last trick and then runs out of time. And I'm just thinking, dang, he just sat down for an hour and a half, went out here yeah. with no warm up, probably still full and just did that. And wants to go again, and it's pretty hot in here. And I was just thinking, man, this guy is different this year. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, I honestly thought Takia was unbeatable. Uh, obviously, if he would have got his full marks, you know, he would have won. But I mean, that's because he had the second highest point total possible. I think Yasu just had the highest, but Yasu always goes for something crazy. Yeah, um, I just don't think he's got. He just hasn't put in as much practice as Takia or Ryoga or these guys because they. These these guys just take it a little more seriously. Um, but yeah, something happened this year, something special happened. Takia barely missed his last trick for the win. Barely, barely, barely missed it. If you watch it. Oh, and it's his best trick, one of his best tricks, in my opinion. I was seeing him. It's Goya's big tap times four, the level eleven. I I, I would see I'd see Takia hit that at practice sessions, like a regular four tap for just breakfast. It was just so easy. Um so I was really surprised he missed it at the end. Um, and you could and you could tell he was like really surprised he missed it too, because he was trying to hype the crowd up with two seconds left. Like, hey guys, this is my last go. Let's get <laughs> I feel like there was like I think I'm not gonna put this on Jake, but maybe there was like a issue with the timing because he had like seven seconds hyping himself up. And like he was like, Okay, I have like two good attempts left. The first attempt he went, I think that was the one that he barely missed. Yeah. And then Jake starts counting yeah. down and it kind of like hit him really quick. And he's like, oh, shit. Like he wasn't sure if he was supposed to time it to have one more. They like, pulled up at the last second and then have that buzzer beater. But like, I think mm -hmm. he kind of rushed it too much because it was just a bad timing situation. You know, I'll have to look at that. I don't know. For me, it looked like he just he just missed that easy one. And he then just, he just was like, oh, my God. Too, yeah. Yeah. For me, it looked like he missed it. But anyway, um, yeah, something. I just knew that because Ryoga went before Takia. <laughs> yeah. You know? So, because Ryoga, it was Ryoga, Takia, Yasu, I think, mm -hmm. for the last people. And and when Ryoga hit that full, full mark, it's like, okay, now and now in Takia's head, he's like, okay, now I have to full mark to win. You know, I, I can't just not get full marks right. this year. Like, there's some pressure. There's some pressure. No matter like how last many year, Did that happen last year, too? If he didn't, I guess he didn't full mark, but if he... Okay. Yeah, I get. I guess he didn't have that like direct pressure. Like, I need to yeah. full mark this to win versus yeah. like I can get by with yeah. missing my last trick. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. yeah, he barely won last year with like with okay. the last trick he 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 clutched up in like the final seconds of buzzer yeah. beater, the level ten cloud bounce, Ken cloud bounce. But even still, you know, he didn't have to full mark to win, and that's it's full marking on that stage is really hard. That's why you only see a couple people do it every year. So. Yeah, he had that pressure, and it looks like Ryoga just was the best on that day. Yeah, for sure. Was that yeah. was that the most exciting KWC that you guys seen? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it was definitely up there. I, I, I don't know. I have a really big bias. I was really stoked when I won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was really exciting for you. Yeah, I feel you. I was saying, um, I mean, exciting is like, I mean, it's insane to see people get that high of point scores in person. Like, see Ryoga yeah. hit 1,900 points on stage in person is like, dude, my God, like, no one's even close except for Takia. And Takia almost hit 2,000 points. He was, like, one inch away, you know, probably less than that. Um, I think the most exciting KFC for me was, uh, I mean, it was probably when, like, Nick won. I was really hyped. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Yeah, no, but, I mean, I, but this one, it was kind of, like, I guess it's more exciting in the sense that, um in previous years there was you could kind of say it was a, it would be like a toss-up or like for example 2019 that was the most random winner ever like when Rui won that was Rui so won, random yeah. but yeah it, and even when nick won it like he won by 200 points so it's not like a, it's not like a 300 400 point difference between first and second or like a 600 point difference between first and 
first and third, you know, um, it's a little hard, but like this year, I, I don't know. I feel like I said for the past, like even three months beforehand, I was like, all right, Rio Gertaki is going to win. And yeah, it happens. But yeah. I mean, it doesn't take away from the excitement of like, they actually, they actually are doing the tricks. It's just like, it's just like a lot more evident now, like who's going to like actually just destroy, you know, because they're actually just so far ahead. Yeah. I don't think there's been players like this, this far ahead relative to other players um, ever. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't think there's ever been like the school difference between real good talkie and like everybody else is is huge, and yeah. I think maybe people listening like maybe they don't really understand because they've never seen them play in person before. But if you see them play in person, it's like uh, if you see them play for like literally ten minutes. I mean, it's pretty evident. Yeah. When did I mean last year and two years ago? It was just Takia way far ahead. He was the Tiger Woods, and uh, what how like. You know, I think we were kind of calling this just watching Ryuga play, not necessarily saying that he's the best, but and not saying that he's done harder tricks than Takia, but I think just the the, the ease of play for him was like, okay, mm. this kid has a lot of potential to win. But mm. I wonder, it would be cool to do like a breakdown of like when he caught up and how he caught up, you know? Mm. I mean, I guess he always had that trajectory and then just brought it to the next level, maybe the last two years. Because yeah. Last year, what did he get? Did he get you know? Remember if he got full marks, if he missed some tricks, if did he get touched last year? Marks? Last year he he didn't get full he, marks. He got off the he qualified actually, second last year. Yeah, so he right. was actually still really good. Like he still qualified yeah. like really high last year. That's funny because he was the second. Um, he was the second highest person. Let me just bring it up. But, okay. uh, he actually. So yeah, I mean, he, in 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 prelims he qualified second with ninety four points. Takia finished first with ninety seven, um, and then in the full marks he got, um, yeah, he finished in the top ten. I mean, no, he finished eleventh. Mm. So he got a thousand eleven points last year, and Takia didn't hit full marks and got fifteen hundred points, fifteen forty three. So um, that wasn't even the jump from last year this, to this year for Cup was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And I even think last year it was like, I, I knew Rio was really good. Um, yeah. And like, even playing with that was kind of when I, he was first on my radar as a person who was like actually super elite. I remember playing with him in person. I was like, oh, he can actually do every single trick. It's not just taps and, yeah. and Ken flips. Like, he actually is really good at stalls too. Um, But, but he, but he's actually a completely different player than he was even last year. I mean, I think that definitely the transition between okay, like Rio is like super, super good. So like, all right, Rio is like top two in the world is like definitely in the last uh, like ten months, something like that. But I can just, I'm just trying to imagine how many hours he put in the past year. I'd love to see. I lo- I wish there was a breakdown of that because uh, he he definitely transformed. He definitely transformed because I don't know that level of consistency obviously wasn't there last year with the difficulty of tricks, but this year I mean he's hitting it every single time when he's practicing. So. Uh, it was really amazing. Yeah. Hmm. Um. And how do you guys the cup go? Yeah, it was it was good. Um, we, I definitely had the goal of getting full marks this year because I didn't get it last year. I missed the quintuple last year, and then this year I really wanted to to redemp re redemption. I wasn't able to get that last trick, which is pretty sad in the moment because it wasn't a huge banger it was just a level nine it was rod's level nine and i missed the lunar so that was a little unfortunate but i did I, i've been practicing turntables for for a really long time now and i was able to open up my run with both the turntable tricks the 10 turntable and the reverse two, normal two, the level seven and i was so so proud to to get that first try I think that really meant a lot to my run. And even though I didn't get full marks, I, I I remember telling people leading up to cup, I was just thinking, yeah, if I get those turntable tricks on stage, I'll be happy. I don't care what happens. I just want to get those. And so looking back, I I achieved my goal and yeah, I ended up with fourth. I I remember talking to you guys. I was like, okay, I got fifth again. uh, Just because we thought a couple of people placed higher and then something's happened. And then they called Shinosuke for fifth. And I just thought, Oh my god! <laughs> it just it just got better because I was expecting fifth and they gave me fourth. So yeah, yeah. felt really really good. Um, I think that makes me yeah. I've I uh, I think ever since yeah 2017 I've every time I've competed I've uh, finished in the top five, and it's uh been a been really really cool just to see that keep happening, and 
yeah, I think, I, and then since 2018, since I won, I, I've been the um, the top foreigner that's placed at World Cup every mm. year. Yeah. So it's been, I think that's just a really cool thing to see for my for myself. Yeah. So but Nick, good. I it's feel like you, you practiced way more last year than you did this year, and this year you placed higher. Yeah, I would say, no, for sure. I would say last year I practiced a definitely a good amount, and this year I didn't. I guess my practice got serious during the last month, but you know, I was able to hit a level 12 this year. Yeah. That was huge. That's like two level tens and not everybody can do 12s. And so I think that was a really, really, really big key factor in my run, just hitting that first 12, the 10 turntable. And if I didn't, yeah, if I didn't hit that, my run wouldn't have been nearly as great, but I thankfully, you know, I was, it was in the cards this year. A turntable became a trick that, mattered and luckily i'd been practicing it for a while so i practiced super super hard i was doing multiple tens every single day once the trick list came out and then yeah use some some baby powder to combat the <laughs> the humidity there and yeah it worked out nice that's good yeah yeah exactly good. yeah uh kato c i I didn't reach my goal. I was expecting to do better, honestly. Um, but I got 19th place. I didn't hit the last two tricks in my run. Um, and even in prelims, I I actually, I mean, I got a backup trick. So I still got 90 points, but I, I still missed a trick. And I missed the same trick uh, that stopped me in the um, in the finals too, which was a stilt, Ken Flip, Jug Stilt, uh, Swap, Stilt, Stop, Swap 1.5, Ken Flip, Jug In. Um and yeah, I, th I think during my final run, it was smooth sailing up until that point. I had 40 seconds and I don't even, I haven't even watched my final run back because it's, <laughs> it's, it's difficult for me to watch. Uh, it's hard to watch. watch. It's hard me to watch. Too. I don't like missing yeah. my, I don't like watching myself miss at all. And, and watching that 40, last 40 seconds, I didn't even watch it. But um, I had 40 seconds to get the last two tricks, 45 seconds. And that, that's kind of like, that's on, that's yeah. on time for me. You know, that's like, that's making good time. Um, and you know, I put that in <clears throat> last year. I, last year I played it really safe. You know, I, last year I played it really, really, really safe. I full marked last year. So with the full marks bonus and everything, I got nine, uh, I, think I, I believe I got nine eighty, nine eighty three at nine eighty six, And then this year I missed two tricks. Didn't get the full mark bonus and got nine seventy six. So I almost, mm -hmm. you know, last year I play, I, I literally made a final run. I was practicing it and I was like, and then I took a trick out. So I was like, okay, I'm definitely going to full marks this. Like I'm yeah. definitely hundred percent full marking this. Um, and I did. And this year I, I I'm going to make my final run. I knew that still trick. I knew I had to come back to, to, to slay the dragon. Uh, it was interesting. It's so interesting because in prelims and practicing, I mean, I was just nailing it pretty much every single time. Wasn't a problem. Um, and you know, when you get up to the stage, you actually get up to the, get up to the plate, you know, these factors, um can can happen but i didn't want to do the same thing as last year i didn't want to play it safe and i wanted to take a risk and you know go for a, the highest points i'd ever gone for by far uh if i got full marks it would have been 1300 but um looking back i should have put this the last trick into the second last place spot because i was actually more confident on that one um mm. and it's just learning like learning with a strategy of your of actually the order of your final run because that matters a lot now i mean it actually is a huge part of the strategy now and um yeah, I went up to slay the dragon. I didn't. Uh, I didn't slay it, so I uh, missed, and it's all good. I I knew that was a calculated risk, and yeah, it didn't happen this year. But overall, I'm really happy. I made, you know, just it, kind of going on to next point. Not as um, not as like, as as like, impressive, I guess. But um, I, you know, making the finals again. I've been able to make the finals every single time I've competed for the last eight years. Um, yeah. I've competed at like six KFCs once, four, five, six KFCs uh, since 2016, and um, being able to make finals every single year has uh, been really, really cool. Um, and it's 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 nice. It's really awesome to compete at that event. And uh, and I like to say also, it's I mean, it's just a it's so incredible, like how um, difficult it is, uh, because actually, if you really look at it, you know, you, you get, everybody's going up in the order of their projected points, and oh, yeah. um, you know, Nick got third. Nick was in the Nick. You were in the third group, right? You weren't in the second to last group. 
we were, we were no. both in the third group. Yeah. yeah. So wow. if so, if everyone's so everyone's practicing their final runs, you know, everybody's. I, I'm assuming all these people who are projecting higher, like pretty high in the second to last group and first in, in the last group. I'm just gonna assume they're they're going for full marks. You know, they've done their final run before. They this is consistent. They're all projecting 15, 16, 1700 points, eighteen hundred points, two thousand points. Some of them. Um, but then you look at you then you look at actually what happens. And uh, you see the amount of full marks in the final that actually get done on the day of, and it's very, very, very slim. I mean, yeah. Monty gets third place, uh, not full marking his run, 1,300 points. Um, um, Takia doesn't full mark his run, gets second, 1,500, and then Ryo is like the only one who full marks. In the, and like, Ryo is probably was, was like the only one, only person who full marked in that entire like last three groups, or like last yeah. two groups for sure, you know? Um, but if everybody got their full marks, you know, Nick, like, I would probably be like, 20th i mean if i didn't get full marks i'd probably be in like the low 20s like and then nick would probably be like i don't know not even in the top 10 you know which is crazy um yeah. but that's just not what happens you know that's just not what happens um it's it's you know these people are practicing getting their full marks over and over and again in practice but when you time to show up it's that extra element of of, of stress and pressure and excitement and, um and it's it just goes to show how many people are full marking in the last three groups that barely anybody does and how hard it is so um, I think that's well, really interesting. To be honest, I'd probably I'd I'd probably have to disagree with with the point of everybody making full marks in practice. I think it's a big part. Uh, I think ego is a big factor, mm-hmm. and I think I think a lot of these Japanese kids have this pressure to, and and, mo- and not just Japanese kids, but well, we see Japanese kids, you know, projecting the highest. So I'll just say them. They're the only people in the last groups. They just feel this big big sense of pressure to perform. And everybody's asking, you know, what's your prelim? What's your finals? And then they always are mm. adjusting based on the, their surrounding players. Like, oh, I have, in order to beat them, I have to do this. So I have to get this amount of points. So I have to add this trick, take this away, whatever. And then you, because because if everybody was trying to do full marks, like seriously, seriously having that be come, come first and not their ego, then we'd see a lot more people nailing their runs just like Ryoga. <laughs> And I mm-hmm. doubt everybody can nail a, a, their final runs like Ryoga. And Ryoga had the third highest, the third hardest final run possible this year. And he was the best at it, better than anybody. And so I, I yeah, I just think there's, it's a little more to, than just getting full marks and crumbling under the pressure. I think people just want to, they're just, yeah. their ego gets the best of them. I think it just carries them and then just, it doesn't make them get full marks because they get up there and like, oh yeah. I I forgot. I didn't actually. I actually didn't become consistent enough to get this on stage when it mattered. Right, right, so, right. I think that plays a huge factor. Obviously, they can get it during practice, but you know, the amount of practice it actually takes to get a full marks run, and for it to not to for it to just be not not lucky or anything like that, not by chance. Like Ryoga was smacking his nineteen seventy three for days, probably yeah. for literal months. Uh, but because he, I, I asked him, and he's like, I was like, yeah, how did you practice the World Cup? He just said, I ran three minute timers ever since the tricks came out. I didn't even practice prelims, and so he's been running that for three months and left no chance. He just went up <clears> the <throat> thing he's been doing for ninety days straight, and he delivered. And you know, if everybody was like that, yeah, they would be all getting full marks, like fifteen hundred points up. But not everybody puts in that time, right? And so it really, yeah, they, they, there's just a big separation there. I for Takia, like I, I was kind of thinking this, and then a few people asked me. Um, he was he's obviously so good at those hard tricks. Is there an argument to be made that he should have just got rid of all these six? He did so many like sixes and sevens, maybe some fives, maybe a four. When yeah. why why doesn't he just throw in another 10 or 11 or maybe a 12 and replace? I mean, a 12 would have been worth so much you know it had been worth like how many sixes like 10 sixes or whatever like or not that much maybe like eight seven sixes yeah um and and you know when in his final run he was rushing so hard he missed like a few really easy tricks he missed like still over the valley two or three times yeah um i i wonder if like the strategy it it was kind of like a missed strategy but it's i know it's it's easy to to say that now, but that strategy has worked for him every single time. Yeah. Like literally every single time. And, 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 and you see Ryoga, Ryoga did the same thing. He, except, well, yeah. Ryoga was a little different. I think he structured his run a little differently. Like he had easy, 
semi hard, and then he went back to easy, and then went into his hard tricks at the at the end. Yeah. So, it was a little different, but Taki's speed has just beaten everybody every single time, and so for him, it was just okay. I'm gonna run this play again. I'm gonna get first again, and yeah, there. <laughs> I mean, that's still the rally. If he would have just got that first try. Right. He would have had like two more attempts for the last trick and he probably would have gotten it. So, yeah, but there's just all these little mis- mishaps. That's a, that's a risky play of doing easy tricks. If you miss them and you have a lot, oh, well, that's if you don't get a yeah. first try, it actually becomes very time consuming. And, but we, it, I think it's also been proven, though, that having low tricks like threes and fours and fives, even threes is actually a, a good move. We, we've seen people who do it win the past three years ever you know 22 23 24 um if you because i think if you get if you get them first try they're actually it's just very good for your momentum and they can actually yeah. like say you were to do thir- like say you were to do your entire trick list all threes and then you had 30 tricks i know that's not possible because you have 10 but i mean that's a thousand point run right there mm-hmm. you know <laughs> if you were to get yeah. them all first try um uh, mm-hmm. but um so if and i saw that on i saw something valuable like that on akimoto's story the other day he was just kind of explaining how it's oh it actually looks to be viable to do these lower level tricks like even if it's just uh, nine points. um because it's been proven you know the last three years people who have won have done them but anyway yeah it's it's it, every every trick you put in is honestly there's some there's some risk at, there's some risk there even if it's a level three and, and four or five and yeah takia and unfortunately i mean yeah that's still the rally really killed him <laughs> that one yeah. trick messed him up yeah yeah, yeah. and and, and like when he was yeah. missing, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he was missing the level ten too. He like he missed the three three ten flip jug triple twice out flip swap. He like missed it a couple times, and he like took a break, like breathe, and he like smiled at the crowd. He's like, "Wow, I can't." It was like almost like, "Wow, I can't believe I'm missing this right now." And I was like, "All right, man, you gotta go. Like, you gotta go, yeah. dude." Um, yeah. but I yeah, for, to go along with that point, Nick, like the the smaller level tricks. I'm just looking at the you know, it's always there's always gonna be margins between point totals that are so 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 close in the in the finals so for example um 10th place this year josh kim 1057 11th place um 1052 12th wow. place 1048 of oh, 13 place 1044 you know wow. 14th place 10, 10 29. Threes. Yeah, yeah exactly so so now these people are thinking like oh wow you know like i mean and it, well actually let me finish 14th place 10 10 29 15th place 10 25 16th place 10 22 you know so it's <laughs> it's it's like you're missing out on on not just one place but like three four places <laughs> with like a grand total of between nine and 20 points so yeah. it's 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 you know it's easy to look back after and look at it and be like wow man like i should have put that last like level three or four in but it's impossible to know but it but the more you go to kfc the more you know that this like these these margins are there and they, it always happens. Like it always, always happens. The point like, there's always going to be a, 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 you know, a section in the bracket where people are literally like within 15 points of each other, but also six places apart, you know? So it's, um, it's interesting to look back after the fact. So I think, yeah, definitely going into the next KFC, uh, it's worth putting in those small tricks, just, uh, you know, maybe one or two of them, you know, maybe just yeah. add them in at the start and just do your run. And you know, yeah, I mean, even if not just looking at his what he did in his final run, even if he replaced a level eleven with a bunch of level fives, he probably still would have gotten to that last trick. And at that point, it's just like the Kanama God. Like if it gives it to your I mean, the like if you slow motion, slow motion it, he literally missed by like a tiny amount. The spike was just right next to the Tama. And so it's so it's not like he necessarily did anything wrong. It was just like just spiking that last one. He spiked that last one. He wins. So, and, yeah. and then when he wins, you're like, oh, he did everything right. You know what I mean? So, it, it, I think it, it, we could look back and criticize it and say it's a misstrategy. Like I was just saying, if he was like really behind and he didn't have like any time to do like his last three tricks, but in this case, it just came to that last spike, you know? So, mm-hmm. it's really not a misstrategy. It's just like a missed spike. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. What do you guys think about the uh what do you guys think about the amount of seeds and wild cards this year? So I'll just I'll just say what it was. Uh there was 10 seeds this year. There was 10 seeds, 14 wild cards, and then 16 people 
uh, qualified outside of the seeds. Okay, like that's sixteen people qualified outside of the seeds and wild cards, like legit, like with the points. Um, but you know, there's forty people in the final, and there's ten seeds and fourteen wild cards. That's, you know, that's yeah, twenty four. Yeah, I feel like I want to say there's too many wild cards, and I I got in through a wild card, so I have to be like careful, but. Mm-hmm. The seat, the seats is actually crazy. How many seats? 16? 10. 10? 10. Ten's a lot. That's a lot. How does that I mean, I can think of like five major events. I guess freestyle as well. Is do they they get people in from freestyle or is it just open? So they, it was like just award. Sorry, you guys. Yeah, go go okay. Uh so so it was like all these comps, all the major comps, so NACO, about the border. Uh, you take the KWC uh, winners from the previous year. You take the girl champion from the previous year. Uh, yeah. You know, um, uh, China cannot open. Uh, I didn't expect. Yeah, that's a that's a major competition. It's close by. Xingyang won that. Uh, there's going to be uh, Noah, who got the girl champion last year. Um, and, you know, there was uh, the Glowkin Cup winners, uh, both mm. male and female this year. Um, so that's already a lot. And then the EKC winner. So that's a lot of seeds. Um, and I already, I know I'm missing a couple too. There was a couple, like a, there, no, no, I forgot what she got a seed for, but uh, yeah, she's winning she battle. Too. No, she didn't. She was, it was different. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not sure what it was, but uh, yeah. So it's all these seeds and, and the wild cards, there's so many wild cards from, you know, the, the global wild cards to there was, I saw it like there's a, there's multiple gender wild cards. There's a couple age wild cards. And then, um, you know, the guy from Australia made it in Michael. There's a continent wild card. I didn't even know. I looked looked back and it was like continent wild card. I was like, oh, what the heck? Like continents. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it makes sense. Uh, but I but yeah, yeah. so I, I couldn't I really wouldn't be able to pick one to say to remove it. Like they all kind of make sense. So the only thing is just to increase uh the amount of people that make it to finals because mm-hmm. it's just is crazy how low to qualify 16 qualifiers and and you know you have to get more than eighty nine points this year, which is insane. Yeah, and that was what one hundred percent Jap or it was all Japanese besides you two. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. and Alex. Well, Alex. Even if Alex Mitchell wasn't a seed, he would have qualified uh, because he got okay. ninety seven points. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> crazy. Ninety seven points didn't even make his prelim until probably like a week or like less yeah. before. Which, by the way, that's another thing I want to bring up. Um. You see the like the point okay, let's just like the highest qualifier ever before him. 97 points. Taki hit it last year, Nick hit it in 2019. Okay. Um highest qualifier ever was 97 points, and then Rogue was second oh, place. Was was oh, he got 98. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. He got 98 in 2018. That's right. 27. Okay. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> my facts are not. Thank you, Nick. Um, but I have the 2024 list right here. Uh and 98 over 98 points has never happened. All right, ready? Takia, 99. Yasu, 99. Alex Mitchell. Or no, I'm sorry. Ryoga, 99. Alex Mitchell, 97. That's a top four spot. So never happened before. Yeah. 99 points never happened. Then three people decided to hit it this year. Yeah. Doesn't make – that's just insane. Alex Mitchell, yeah. 97 points. But – and then it's like, all right, there's a drop-off. There's always a drop-off, right? Like, you know, like nobody – not like every, all these kids are hitting high runs. Nope, 96, 96, 95. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> 96, 96, yeah, like- 96, 95. <laughs> You'd want to say that we should make level 10s harder, but the issue with that is then 11s and 12s have to be harder, and there's no one doing 11s and 12s in these runs because they're too hard, you yeah. know? So, yeah, I mean, KDBC, they are, I, I think they run, like, the best event. Everything is so – like I love the rules. I love the format. Like, I, I can't – it's almost too big for me to, like, criticize because – there's it's just so global there's so many things to, to consider you know versus mm-hmm. me like criticizing the judging format which is much more smaller and easier to fix but um i i don't even know what they would do to to fix that you know yeah it's, it's is, really it, is it even a problem you know right it's yeah it's it's you're going off uh and you know yeah it's 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 tough to it's tough to even say because uh, I guess just going off these prelim scores, right? Going off, if I'm just going off the prelim scores, which um is only one metric, uh, you could say you could argue like, all right, so many people are getting higher scores this year. Uh, these tricks are easier than last year relative to the difficulty for skilled amount of skilled players. But I mean, 
it's just like yeah as you said it's like there's a there's like a couple options it's like for to, to make it i don't know like more accessible for for players i don't know but it's not it's the world championships it's meant to be super hard you know right so it's right. it's either like it's either open up more spots like you said or make the tricks harder but then the level 11s and 12s will be harder and no one's even doing those no. um but i will say this you know there's 10 seeds 14 wild cards and i in you know to, to make it in this year you have to qualify in the top 21 scores um top 21 scores you have to for points without wild cards uh, you had to make it in the top 21. And, um, you know, after that, you know, you see people with seat with wild cards who are making it in, uh, with this in the seventies of points. Some people got in, you know, with the nationalities, the nation one, two, and three, like sixties. Um, yeah, in the sixties and seventies, they're making it in. And then if you're Japanese, uh, you're screwed because, uh, <laughs> yeah. if you, I mean, there's a guy who got 90 points. I mean, the, the, there's four people who got 90 points. Um, or five people got 90 points and and two of them were already seeds. Um, and then one guy, Hiroaki Matsutomi, got 90 points um, and just missed the cutoff because uh, I might square beat him uh, by two points. And he didn't get into the finals, even though he got 90 points. And then you see people getting in below him who are, you know, hitting these wild cards, 70 points and stuff. And then the global wild cards like 89, you know, 88, 77 from the USA. But real realistically, like 77 points. Um, uh, Jimmy Covington, who got in at the global three, um, he was 49th place. So there's yeah. that many people who are Japanese above him, you know, who didn't yeah. get in because they're Japanese. Uh, because yeah. there's no wild cards to Japanese players, because they're the obviously the majority nationality of the event. So uh if the rules stay the same with wild cards and, and there's this amount of seeds. Um, which honestly, I didn't even know there was going to be 10, like 10 seeds is a lot. I think that's probably yeah. the most it's ever been. But if, if the rules stay the same, like for Japanese players specifically, you actually have to be like disgustingly good, like disgustingly no. good top, to make it up. You have to yeah. be in the top, the top 0.5% of players, you know, to make it in because those are the stakes. Like everybody's, and, you know, and every, you know, from this year on, like if nothing changes, I, I mean, you know, and I don't, the scores only get higher. You, you realize like it's the smartest thing to do is to base your prelim score to get into the finals is to go higher than the cutoff than the year previous. Yeah. Last year yeah. it was eighty six, and this year it's freaking ninety points. So it's like, well, even uh, so, even insane. if the guy got ninety points and he still didn't make it, right? Yeah, because his because his uh, squared points total. So was, you uh, really less. needed ninety one points. Well. To play it safe, yeah. yeah. To like, okay, I'm gonna qualify. Yeah, I mean, points. yeah, exactly. It's like not. It's like you don't want to aim for the cutoff of last year. You want to aim for yeah. higher than the cutoff of last year. So you want to at least yeah. like, you're, I want to go 91 points, uh, which is like ridiculous to say because if you got 91 points in like any year prior, uh, it would be like, oh, dude, good, good stuff. Like good, especially even before 2019. Like 2019, I think the top 10 had not the top 10 prelims was like 90, and it was like, all right, that's solid. But like before that, if you got 90 points, you'd be like, all right, you're you're a beast. You know, yeah. and now it's like if you get ninety points, you're like, eh. you might not That's cut crazy, it. That's crazy, bro. I mean, <laughs> yeah. just imagine getting not qualified with ninety point prelim. That is insane. Yeah, well, we can ask this guy because it literally happened. <laughs> <laughs> like that sucks so bad. Actually, who, sucks. who was it? I've actually never. Nick, do you know this guy? Hiroaki Matsutomi. I think I'll have to look him up. Oh, okay. I'll have to look him up. I mean, I feel like. If I know if I see the Instagram, yeah. Let me just um we we can we can move on, but I'll I'll, I'll look. I'll look. Okay. Juryu though, Juryu too though. He got 89 points. Yeah. Think, that's a good score. Yeah. <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> I mean, for yeah. like a, a really good Japanese player, that's like practicing for three two months straight, you know, and then you still don't get in. It used to be like extremely you have to be, either be a top player and then not practice or if you're just like a really good player you have to like practice so hard and still might not get in you know yeah what do you guys think about the seeds i mean even for these major competitions you guys because open division um you know it is a it is it is it is definitely a lot of skill to win an open division especially these major competitions you're competing against the best players um the, the you're you're very skilled if you win, but it's also a different type, different style of competition. Like it's completely yeah. different than KFC, you yeah. know. Um, and obviously, people want to see these players in the finals, 
But if they can win an open division, they're probably going to be good enough to qualify, you know? Um, yeah. And so to use these seeds on them, um, it might not. I don't know. I feel like there's there's an argument to be had about that just because it's not the same comp style, you know? And instead of having so many, um, and actually the seeds did pretty well, did, did well this year. I think all the seeds had good point titles. I don't think every seed would have made it in um, mm. if it was just this, but, uh, but you know they had really high point totals, anyways. But just for the wild cards, for example, you know you're having people who are coming in with into the finals, the final stage, uh, you know with these lower point totals than like people who are in the 80s. Uh, I think there's an argument to be had. Uh, that's like maybe we need to cut out the, like those people for the like the pure excitement of the finals because then yeah. there are you there are like people who are who have proved themselves to be really skilled. To, you know now is way more now it's going to be not you know, factually more, more exciting to watch, but I guess the probability of it being more exciting to watch is higher because they're, these players are based on films are more skilled than these wildcard players. But also I do understand why Gloken has the wildcards in the first place, of course, because I mean, this is the world championships, the world, yeah. the, the world representation on the stage means a lot. Uh, and it is really cool to highlight that. I mean, everybody's coming here for Kendama from all over the world. So uh, I see two sides to that, and one side I can see like, all right, let's take away some walk, let's take away some of the seeds, so you like more proof, like you know, that of your skill on the day of, and more proof your overall skill in general. Um, that you're you're keeping it up year round uh, is there, but I also totally understand that, that the it's a world, what's the World Cup, you know, and um, yeah. the representation. Uh, it's a it's a very very important part of the event. Yeah, no, for sure. But Nick, you can you can go. What? No, no, you go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um. Yeah, I mean, your first instinct is to look at the lowest score and be like, okay, do we need to seed that player? And I think it's usually Australia, but I would never, you would never take out Australia because that's going right. to get, it's like the, it's a full continent. Yeah. Um, And it, it's a really untapped market. I mean, Australia can really boom in Kendama. Mm -hmm. Like it's like a perfect location. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, I, I, I mean, maybe removing a few of the European seeds. I don't know. I think there's th is there three of them? Is there two? I, it always kind of confuses me mm. with the rules. But um, I mean, you can do that. Yeah, I, I don't exactly know when the countries and the continents come into play. You know what I mean? Like, it just, right. it's just too confusing for me. And especially because the rules are usually translated. So it's hard to, to really know. And I, I, it's not like I don't trust what they're doing. I know, I know they know with the deal yeah. is, so I trust them but I don't exactly know how many continent how many country seeds there are I guess there's one continent but I don't know um when the country seed would replace the continent or if you know what I mean so mm -hmm. yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah it's, it's just something to, something to think about and also I mean you know there there are seeded the, I think the majority of the seeds are coming from the champions before so like Yasu seeded and he won three years ago. Um, obviously he would have made it anyways. Yeah. This guy did ninety nine points in his prelims with all, all both of his runs under a minute, right next to me. So uh, saw him sit down in the corner. I saw him sit down each time out of the corner of my eye. And I'm like, man, that's crazy. Um, I still have like two <laughs> two two, or two tricks left, and I know he just did ninety nine points. So I don't really. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, but three does seem like a lot, doesn't it? Should it be two? The last yeah, two yeah. winners. I, yeah, because I mean. For my, yeah, you know, that's actually that's how Nonoko was seated too. He was 2022 champion. Um, and uh, yeah, but I think, I think, yeah, I mean, the, I think the whole they started seeding players from like three years out. Uh, if you win once, you're seated for like the next three years. Um, they started yeah. doing that in 2017, and I think it probably might have been just because Wyatt Bray didn't make it in, you know, or no, he, he heard, yeah, in 2016. <laughs> So oh, and the next really? year they get it. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It was that was a weird. That was weird to not see him in the final in 2006. I mean, he literally won the year before, you know, and he just didn't even yeah. qualify the next year. Uh, but then they put seeds in, and so he made it every year after that just because of his seed. Um, but then the seeds rules got in place, and then they you know, there's seeds and stuff. And uh, um, so yeah, I mean, Yasu's Yasu's only gotten so much better since 2021. But uh, maybe maybe they could take that. Maybe it'd just be two years. Yeah, like you said. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. We don't necessarily need to re reward these players because they're if they just won KDBC, they're like how are they going to qualify? I guess why is an example, but you know, the last like six years, it's like they're all going to qualify, right? Uh, so I can imagine doing two years, but then also, 
I guess there's a point, like even if they do three years, one of those players is bound to win another event and then leave another spot open for uh, somebody to qualify into that spot. Like, I don't know if it happened this year. Yeah, I guess Rio. No, Takia won last year. And in the year Takia, prior. In the year prior, did he win? Did he, uh, I guess he didn't really win a major open. Well, I mean, he would have gotten the seed that Ryoga got, but he couldn't get it because he already was the seed. Because Ryoga got the Golkin Cup seed. Okay. Because he got second at that. Okay, yeah. So that opened it up for Ryoga to get it, because and then I guess Ryoga didn't win an open division. But of course, if any of these players hit an open division, they they have a good chance of winning. You know, right. like if Taki and Ryoga hit battle this year or Nako this year, it's like my money's on one of them to win. You know, <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, it's just really interesting. It's really, really a cool format. Like it's really well thought out and, um. Interesting to see where it goes in the future. Do you guys have a like? Are you guys motivated for next cup? Do you have any strategy? Or are you not even thinking about that? It's it's far out. Uh, yeah, it's, it's far <laughs> yeah. out. Uh, Nick, you can answer first for for next year's World Cup. Yeah. Hmm. I yeah. guess we'll just see how it goes, right? We'll just see how it goes. I'm yeah. not. Sh- yeah, I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to say anything yet. I don't, it's too far out. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah. really know, but. I'll definitely be going. I'm yeah. definitely yeah. Going for sure. I'll definitely be there. Um, we'll just see. Yeah, it's. Yeah, I think I think a lot. I think one thing I do want to say. This isn't even kind of related to that question, but the the importance of game time decisions for that day, <laughs> and and maybe yeah. the game time decisions for prelims. I know some people like to stick with their guns and you know trust what they've practiced, which is great. I actually really, really respect that too. But if the reality is you're not consistent with what you're practicing and you're not getting it every time, then consider changing it once you get there and you realize, okay, it's not working for me now. It's not going to work for for me tomorrow. Like things change when you get to Japan and then things also change when you step in that venue. So yeah, you can, you can adjust up until you go. So honestly, it just depends on the day because it's always it's all about who's the best on that day. It doesn't yeah. matter about like who's the best practicing up to it. It's the best who can perform the best on that day. And if it's if it's if your practice isn't serving you for some reason, some trick is getting the best of you on one of those days, time to make a game time decision and lower your ego and, and maybe go for less points or or simply just make something easier in order to get full marks, in order to get the mo- most amount of points guaranteed possible. Because you always want you always want to get full marks. You always want to get a full a full marks on your prelims uh, for finals as well. You want to aim for the highest. But you know, I think it's a big play. I think that's something we most a lot of a lot of people can look back on this year and be like, okay, I should have done that. Should have done this. Why did I put that in my run when it wasn't as consistent in my practice on the day of? Like, what am I doing? You know, people can always look yeah. back and, and decisions. So, oh no, I think I went out. No, you're we hear you. Stop, 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 you're good. You're good. I think I went out. Um, oh, he can't hear us. Oh, I'll just I'll just talk. No, I I totally feel that, dude. Like last year, I didn't practice that much, and I had a run planned like a week prior, and then that completely changed. This year, I practiced like every day. I was consistently hitting. I I I wasn't like a confident consistent, but every day I was hitting. Um. Like first or second try, at, uh, eighty four point run, um, and then when I get there, I go down to, I mean, I hit a seventy five, but mm-hmm. I was going for like an eighty one at most, you know, and like, yeah, I mean, when I look at these tricks, like, I think with with the stage, you know, when when you're practicing in your backyard, uh, you have a certain confidence level, like, oh yeah, I can definitely hit um 10 juggle spike every time you know but then like what i love about competition and like the pressure and going on the stage is it really tests that confidence to like okay now like when i'm on the stage and i you know i I did my final run i could really feel that there i was confident in some tricks like there's like you know the ken flip juggle late ken juggle spike I guess a trick that I, I may I may miss a few times, but there I've just been doing that for so long. There's just like this high level of confidence that like I'm gonna I'm gonna be able to to save that if I need to save it. 
And then there's um, like Chad's trick, which is completely my play style. It's the three tap juggle mm -hmm. three Ken. But I, I was struggling with it sometimes during qualifying. Um, I was I didn't have that time position perfect. It, it, it wasn't like, yeah, just at that same confidence, even if in my backyard, it, it doesn't really matter. But like when I get to the stage and I start like practicing these, it really tests and feels like, okay, what, where do I actually, where am I, where does my ability lie? You know? And then I get on stage and I struggle with that trick, you know? Um, mm -hmm. I struggle with tentacle spike too. I mean, I didn't even, I, I, a lot of my qualifying tricks, I practice individually at a ton. I didn't practice that one because it's tentacle spike, you know, I've been juggling for so long and I knew that I needed to, to work on it, but I just kind of worked on it while I was in, while I was practicing qualifying runs. And I wouldn't necessarily say I'd go back and practice that one individually because I feel like my room for improvement is so small at this point, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I uh, struggled on that one a few times. I don't know, with nervousness or yeah, string problems, a little bit of both. Um, but yeah, like that, a high level competition just really tests your comfortability with tricks, you know, like your, your true confidence for, for doing a trick. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think a lot of people have experience as those who have experience and it helps them, you know, I think experience plays a big factor, but those who don't, I think the baseline of preparation just kind of is a little separated. It's, I yeah. think the standard is a little bit different for those who are more experienced. They may not, you know, have to practice as intensively to get this full mark score or whatever to make it to the finals compared to the person who has never gone, who doesn't really know what it's like. And is kind of just banking on practicing how they usually do or whatever it may, you know, whatever it may be. But I, I just think, I just think from just watching people, I think, um, it's just the amount of practice that goes into it for a lot of people. It's just, okay, these guys practice way harder. They make it in. Cause I think I, I, just speaking from my experience here, I've always had my confidence rest on my practice and my preparation for every event. And especially for KDBC, my, my first year I went, my only goal was making finals. I didn't even make a final run. I literally didn't even know what I was going to do. So when I made it, I didn't have any idea what was going to happen, Yeah, but I just practiced prelims for two, three months and when I got there, yeah, it was tough. I mean, you get, you get the pressure, but then you just think, man, I've been doing this for so long in such smaller yeah. times in three minutes. And it's like hard to believe you can actually fail. And so once you, once you, because it comes with the preparation, that, that confidence comes with the preparation. So uh, from my experience, I've always been able to make finals just because I've practiced enough for what I'm based <laughs> on my skill, based on what I'm capable of. I think I've had enough practice to back it up. As for some people who are maybe super good, but the practice didn't really you know, back them up and get them to where they wanted to go. For example, maybe um, Adrian Valau was aiming for an 1800 point run finals. He was seated. He had this 93 prelim, great stuff. Maybe he was expecting a lot. Um, and then he just kind of got reality checked like yeah. pretty hard. Yeah. Um, not to say he did bad, but because he, he did, because he made finals, it was great. Put on a good performance for Romania, but um, it's just people like these, like they've never been and it's not yeah. their fault. They just don't know. And so they didn't yeah. practice it. And so their expectations are skewed because they don't realize, oh, I have to get, I have to do this much in order to get here. Whereas up until this point, I've always been, only had to do this much and I've still been able to achieve highly. Uh, KDBC is just different. You know, it yeah. just really comes down to who puts in the most time and energy to the practice and yeah. refining their work. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You can't fake a KDBC one. You just can't. No. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess in preparation for next year, I was just, I thought entered my mind that. Maybe you guys are thinking of when, uh, with how uh, qualifying is building up to like a 93 limit next year that you guys need to win an open division this year. <laughs> just to play it safe, you know? <laughs> like, you're like, I, I got to That's just to alleviate, to alleviate some stress. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's always nice like, to be a seed. Yeah, for sure. Or else you do like a 94 next year. <laughs> well, <laughs> not like, for us. Because the U.S. wildcards. Oh, true, true, true. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay, hey, I, I, hey, well, I mean, yeah, based on this year, I could probably cruise with like 78. So, oh, I'm true, Zach. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah it's exactly like made global yeah, wild cards, but, like yeah. global, global wild cards. Like, you know, it doesn't just mean USA, but like it kind of just kind of does. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I'll probably yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Uh, yeah, 80 points. No, 
but that's that's literally <laughs> yeah. a, that's literally a thing. I mean, you can literally make it in. Yeah. With, yeah. yeah so. Yeah, um, you're shot. <laughs> so I guess some of these Japanese, uh, one of these Japanese kids needs to hit China Kanama open or like EKC. Dude, yeah, you know, just send it over there and win, and then you're good to go. You know, <laughs> yeah, like China Kanama like, open, like they should go to that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Qualify uh, for cup is like equal to winning a major event. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, looking, <laughs> I'm looking at I'm looking at a my my questions that I got because I just posted questions solely on KFC topic. Uh, we actually covered most of them. Um, um, I mean, one person asked, uh, top five or ten for next year, like their predictions. Uh, I can't. I, I mean, I don't. I don't know. It's. I can name. I, I mean, I you can know. name like five certainly, yeah. and then the other five, like, should know. Should is probably in there, like, Alex, and then it's just whatever if Alex goes. If Alex goes, and then it's another three Japanese kids that just get in. I think like Koki was in. I don't even know if I pronounced his name. He was in top ten last year, and this year I don't know if you know if he qualified. Did he qualify yeah. this year? Yeah, like I don't know. <laughs> it, it's. I don't think he did. Yeah, it's crazy, dude. It's the yeah. the randomness is is insane. Yeah, but I'm just gonna guess the top ten is gonna be like eighty percent Japanese. Yeah, like usual. But I don't. Oh, I don't. Sure. I couldn't name players because yeah, it's gonna switch a lot next year. I mean, next year we're gonna see a kid who we haven't even heard of in the top ten. So yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, like hundred percent is gonna happen. So yeah, um, yeah. But other than that, I mean, that's we already covered all the questions that I have. Nick, do you have any from for yeah, KWC? From yeah, for KWC. Yeah, yeah. Let me. Yeah, I have them right here. Um, cannot. Well, what does it really take to make it to KWC finals? What do you think needs to happen for Americans to get back on top of the Kanama world? Oh God, those are two. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, what American has has potential to get to Rio's level? At this Hold point, it. our money, my money's on Colin. I mean, yeah, <laughs> he's the only one you know, who's like, like really young and, and <laughs> playing. You know, playing him high is, hours, achieving at a high level. Yeah, like. I so would can say we, can Edwin, we just, but yeah, I don't know. I think it's Colton. I think the only yeah. person is Colton. Um, <laughs> right now, in our in our future. Yeah. Um, what does it take to really take to make it to KDC finalists from Chavi? Um, yeah, let's just we can cover that really quick. It can yeah. be a really quick answer. Well, you need to let's just say for points, you need a ninety point prelim or above. So you need to be within the top. I don't know. 30 players in the entire world to qualify for this event by just points legit. I'd say top 30 to 50 and, and 35, 40 of those players are Japanese. So you're, yeah, it's, it's really, really difficult. And then you need to, you, you just, I, I guess it's the easiest way to put it. Cause we can factor in wild cards and do all this stuff, but if you really want to be a KBC finals, what does it really take to be, to play it safe and not to bet on anything? You just need to be at the skill level 90 points. So just take a look at the level nines. Yeah. Take a look at the level. I mean, level eights and nines for backup. Maybe just look at those tricks and be like, okay, can I do these tricks? If you can't, well, you're not going to make finals. You're not going to, you're not there yet. I mean, realistically, if you, if you can starting now practice and start hitting uh 99 points in qualifying yeah. right if you can do that by like november of course the next level 10s are going to be way different but i feel like there's enough variety in those level 10s that yeah. like if you get those down i'm sure like if you start getting 99 points consistently i mean maybe that's that's well, it yeah like what if you really wanted to make finals if from now if this was your only goal for the whole year then what you need to do is just simple just look at the kdbc tricks from this year yeah i don't know maybe last year whatever whatever it takes for you to scale on a, on a consistent level just yeah. do these tricks because a lot of the tricks stay the same a lot of them yeah do. a lot of lower ones do up till seven you'll see a lot of repeats eights nines and tens okay these yeah. these change. same concepts seven, though it's the same concepts you know same concept up until seven you even have repeat tricks same concepts but schedule measure up to those do practice you know pick five tricks for each prelim run six with a backup practice three minute timers every once in a while Use yeah. your scale your your ability based on the KDC trick list and just use that as your reference. Don't use anything else as a reference. Literally, don't look at anything else yeah. to base your skill level. Just use that and be like, hmm, 
Am I good enough yet? Am I consistent enough yet? And just yeah. keep going based on the KDC triplets. That's all you have to do. Use it as yeah. your, that's it. Mm -hmm. Simple. It's actually kind of a fun challenge to just from now yeah. up to next KDBC, put in, put in 30 minutes a day and see, get, have a goal of your top qualified score and see if you can hit it. Right, that's what I'm yeah. going to start doing. I think like, I'm just going to see what, but potentially can I get, like, if I, if I get lucky for a run, of course, I'm going to keep going. So I'm going to get more and more consistent at it. But like, can I get a 95 qualifying? Can I get a 1500 final run? You know, like that's just such a great way to become a good kind of player. You know, it is, it is just yeah. using one frame of reference for progression over a certain period of time, no matter what yeah. it is, just yeah. use that. He's at. There's a lot of people at Camp Skywy, this camp that Zach and I went to two years ago, that would just literally just bet, judge their own level odds on the KDC tricks. They'd be like, "Oh, are you level two? Yeah. Level three? Are you level four? What does that even?" I, then I was thinking, what, is it, "What do you even mean by that?" You yeah, know? but but it's it worked, yeah, it's actually yeah, yeah, <laughs> good shot. Um, so yeah, that's a that's an answer to your question, Shabby. And then Jacob Schultz asked, "What do you think needs to happen for Americans to get back on top?" of the canal world. And I'm pretty sure he just means winning KDBC. Yeah. I mean, you know, I guess we're just saying Sean, cause he's so young. Obviously he hasn't hit like insane KDBC tricks, but I don't also want to disregard any top players currently. Like yeah. Nick, if you wanted it, Zach, if you wanted it, Alex, mm -hmm. Edwin, I mean, if you start practicing now, you have a shot, you know, like, I don't know how the high of the percentage is, but like I was talking to Alex a lot about him, like <clears> finding a new identity in Kendama, you know, he's not grinding as much. He's kind of trying to find like what he can do, which is funny for a lot of people because of how good he is and how he's still going to be winning a lot of the American open and European open events. But once he sees Rio Gantake, he's like, you know, I, wh who am I? Like, what's going on? You know, like, um, but yeah, I mean, if you are a current top player in Europe, in the States, and you start grinding now, like for sure, I I, I want to root you on. But, you know, at the same time, Ryo Gintaki are just so far ahead from years of doing this, dude. Like, Gintaki has won the last three years. Like, yeah. Yeah. So it just takes a mindset shift. I think yeah. a lot of people, clearly, you don't take it enough, take it seriously enough. And right. Very few players outside of Japan who take it serious as, as serious as them. Yeah, you know, we I I can't even I can only name a couple people in the U.S. out of my knowledge that take it that serious and not only take it that serious but want to you know go to competitions with a competitive mindset and want to be like yeah I want to win this. You yeah. know, they're not just yeah. film grinders. They don't just spend five hours in front of a camera. Which you can still get really good like that, but to win under pressure, to go into competition, to be that guy, represent the country, go into an open, want to win the competition not just go there to just socialize. It's just, it's a, it takes a different mindset. It takes a really different no, mindset, yeah. competitive mindset that not a lot of people have in Europe and America right now. Um, and and, and not a lot of people are willing to, willing to, you know, go no. for it. Yeah, yeah. Not a lot of people are willing, people are willing to be like, okay, I actually will, you know, sacrifice other things in my life to practice for this event. I will sacrifice my time at the event to, to practice as well. Uh, and this mindset, like you said, and sacrifice basically the time, the time you put in. Because at the end of the day, like it's really just so many hours like, that you have to put in to achieve these big goals. And and uh, yeah, just I mean, the Japanese are putting in way more hours. And the K W C, uh, you know, I think the best way to practice for K W C um, year round, if not like the one what, what we already just talked about. I mean, it's literally just taking high amounts of hours per day. You know, yeah. and that's how, yeah. Yeah, that's really it. We're all going to talk about playing hours and hours and hours per day. And I'll give you, and I'll, I mean. Let's talk about the difference in prioritization. I mean, I'll just give a good example right now. I I was able to hang out and talk with Nonika like two weeks before KFC. And she recently just got graduated from university. She got a she got a full time job. And I asked her, I'm like, okay, because because you don't I mean you could probably barely tell that anything's changed. She's still putting out clips like once a week at least. Um she's been doing that, high quality clips. She's very active. Um, I asked her, I was like, hey, so like, how's the Kadama work balance? You know, because you're obviously not a university student anymore. You're, you're, you know, you've new, you have a full time commitment for a job. Um, so I'll just break it down for you because you basically broke it down. Okay. So she's at work for nine hours a day, it takes 45 minutes both ways to commute. Okay. So 10 and a half hours a day. All right. 10 and a half hours a day, five days a week. Wow. Just, just not, I mean, not playing Kadama, you know, 
No. Every single five days a week, 10 and a half hours, just not doing anything but going to work and going home. Um, on work days, five, five days out of the week, she's hitting two hours of account play per day. Wow. On weekends, four hours. So that's awesome. Uh, that's all you need. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's more than enough time for significant that's, improvement yeah, over time. For sure. You know, for sure. And that's someone yeah. with a full time job in yeah. Japan. That level of prioritization. Uh, I don't know anybody who's working. Uh, I mean, I mean, I'm sure that people in the U.S. are doing it. Don't get me wrong, but I just haven't heard of it. It's not as common. And then you, you, you think it's her with a full time job. And you, then you see talking to Ryoga, these kids are in school. Uh, they're definitely playing way more than that. You know, and 18 hours a week is a lot. Like, that's a lot still. Uh, but, you know, talking to Ryoga, they're probably hitting double that. <laughs> you know, um, so it's it's like the prioritization really is is what it is. And these kids are prioritizing it higher than everybody else they have been not just for a week or a month or a year but multiple years and that's really what has led up to what has been happening yeah i want to say one thing about the mindset uh and then yeah. we can maybe shift to lotus and the partnership and stuff but i i thinking about like these good players who maybe are older in the states there's there's a ton of them you know and a lot of european players too and if you think that you have like already peaked then you have yeah right like if if you believe that then yeah it's a mindset like yeah you've already peaked you're not going to go back but if you think that there's a chance that you haven't peaked yet and that there's room to grow and with the right dedication you can get back up there then you can you know it's just what you believe like um there i can think of a bunch of players who just because of their age or because of their job uh, they have less time. They don't have as much time as they used to. If they set the goal um, for qualifiers or for winning KWC next year, and they really go for it and they believe they can, then like that 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 is a that is an infinite amount higher chance than if you don't believe that. You know, like yeah. I'm not saying that you will, but like you you just went from like a one. If you think you've already peaked, you're not going to win. You have a zero percent chance of winning. If you have if you have the mindset of, I think I can win, I'm going to go for it. Like, I'm going to change my routine. I'm, I haven't peaked yet. Like, I'm going to I'm going to be better. I'm going to climb up the leaderboard. Then that is infinitely higher than a 0% chance. You know? I don't I don't know what the number is, but it's way higher than zero, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think you're putting the the opportunity, the chance out there into the world. Yeah. You're just, yeah. without my thinking that, you're like, it makes it possible. The world is now, you just put that energy out there. It's like, okay, I want to do this. You start making decisions, you're changing your actions. You just now make it a possibility. Your life changes and the world yeah. like receives that. Yeah. It's something about it's something about it because before you even put it out there, it doesn't exist. Right. Just even, just even like exactly what you were saying. If you don't, if you think you already peaked, there's no chance. Yeah. There's literally zero <laughs> percent chance because yeah. you're not doing anything to work yeah. towards it. But yeah. if you change your actions like that, it's, it makes something possible. Something changes. Yeah. And I think that's why we look at, um, Pulling, like we know that he is on the grind up. Like yeah. he might, maybe doesn't have the mind. He doesn't have that goal of winning KDUC, but he definitely has the go doesn't have the mindset of him already been better than where he is that he's already peaked. You know, like that's why I think we we like mentioned him because he's shown really good progression. He's young, and you can see how much he's grinding and and like where that route is going. Like it's not this mindset of like okay, I need to like, yeah, I, I, I'm never going to get back to where I was before, you know, like these, yeah. like a lot of young kids just, I guess because they're young, you know, and they haven't had to, you know, develop a mindset shift, which is hard to do, but they just, they're, they're young and, and they can just yeah. grind and, and do it, you know, versus when you're older. And if you've had that, like these, beliefs that you can't do that again then yeah i mean it's it's definitely hard to do but um yeah. it really just takes a turn like especially i mean if you if you want to win if if a dream of yours is doing kwc but then you also think that you're never going to get better than you once were at some point then those are contradictory thoughts you know like those two yeah. thoughts can't be in your mind at the same time like you got to pick one you know yeah. yeah i think whether you're like yeah, basically, I think that summarizes what you just what we just talked about. Is just like whether you believe you can or can't. I mean, you're like you're right yeah. either way. You know, yeah. it's just yeah. yeah. Let's get into our uh, partnership. Super, super stoked to talk about this. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think just 
the beginning of it, like, I think we, I mean, when was the first time we met each other? It was probably in Seattle when I was filming for Luke. I remember. And yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Seattle 2020. I remember it was right before the online NACO for that year, 2020 NACO. You came yeah. down in October yeah. and you went to film yeah, Luke Ford. And we were, just, we, that's the first time we met. We met at this basketball court. Yeah. This, some of this, this park. And we were, yeah, it was good to finally meet you because I think, I think I had, I talked to you a little bit. I'd seen you in the comments of my post for a while, but I also <laughs> talked to you. Because I did. Yeah. And I also knew you as the guy who was doing tit tightrope on TikTok and yeah, yeah. This guy. So I knew, I obviously knew you and then I knew you owned Lotus and you also put on some competitions for the community, the online yep. Kenoma Open or yep. internet Kenoma Open. Sorry. IKO, right? Yeah, I, it's Instagram to internet. We changed from Instagram. Year sorry. To year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I remember competing in that. You asked me, you invited me to that. So yeah, I yep. definitely knew you. That was the first time we met. So, and then from there, I'd say we didn't really talk too much, but we also, we also, you also had me on for some interviews. Right. I mean, between that, I was just spamming your guys' DMs about uh, nerdy trick stuff. You guys, definitely, yeah, you definitely were. Have to to dare. <laughs> yeah, you give me dares. Give you dares. Yeah, just another grom like, Nick, try this, you know. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> yeah. dares though. Yeah. Um, you had me on a couple times for an interview. Yeah. Um, yeah, one before I went to Japan, one when I was in Japan, one, one in 2021. I remember all of them, actually. I remember exactly, yeah. Yeah. I remember them. yeah and so, then I feel like me, you, me and Nick had like a really good, good discussion i mean it was still so early we were just like acquaintances but at catch and flow we hung out a little bit remember nick me, me and you did yeah. We, yeah and then uh talking kendama stuff and then i had zach on in new york that was and then but i feel like that was when um i feel like we were already, we were already talking at that point but after that i feel like ever since then it was like we're we got closer for sure yeah and then we ended up getting closer and closer and then just kind of started discussing the future of kendama and, and not necessarily that's the topic but we were just kind of talking about like we're just yeah just talking way more you know right and then it came to yeah you guys making that decision us talking about um yeah i mean just talking about what we can do together mm -hmm. um and then yeah. we kind of illustrated like okay, this could actually happen. And we really wanted to make sure back in like January, I guess, of like what my motivations were with Kendama, what you guys, you guys took that turn, right? From like kind of stepping out of like the top player competition route to like more of a um, teacher, influencer. Um, yeah, just a bigger part of the community when it came to, I don't want to say teaching, but like, I don't know how you guys would define what you guys are doing now, but an influencer is kind of like a stupid buzzword, but I like, I like mentor. Mentor. Like yeah. Mentor. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I'm just super stoked to be able to work with you guys and maybe we should kind of talk about a little bit uh, of like what this, because we, we call it a partnership um, I think for a lot of people, you, I, it, it, a big part of the partnership, I think, is you guys just being on like the Lotus team, like when it comes to events and mm -hmm. competing and repping kendamas. And when I'm at an event, I kind of consider myself on the Lotus team as well, right? Like I'm, don't really consider my, myself the CIO, CEO, even though I'm like telling people what to do. I'm more just there for the event. I'm there to like hang out, make friends, um, and hang out with my friends. But then also, like, I think we really aligned with, um, like, the work towards the community, right? Like, with what I'm doing with Lotus and, you know, my, the value I put into competition, um, where I can see Kendama going in the future, um, you know, the element shape and uh, just, just really, like, believing and putting all my cards into the sport of Kendama. Yeah. And with you guys, too, with Gallagher Kendama um with yeah you guys mentoring people the community uh the advice the dms the free guides like i think we both took yeah we both really aligned and taken a turn into the same kind of route 
to uh, to help grow Kendama. And that's when it was like, you guys didn't, you know, you guys were kind of over the, like, oh, I'm on a team again, right? Like you want to do more than that. You've been doing that for so long. You want to give more to a team and you want to give more to Kendama and you guys need Kendamas, right? And you guys really like the almond shape. You liked my team, you like your yoga. And, uh, <laughs> and, and so like, yeah, I think like a part of it is just, us being on the same team together, which is really cool. But then there's a bigger part of us like really working together and being aligned in everything, whether it's condominomics or making shapes or designs or influencing the community. Um, yeah. Marketing, advertising, like these interviews, you know, like there, there's like countless things that we'll be collaborating on because it is kind of a collaboration, you know, but mm -hmm. that's when I think, yeah, yeah, we we started talking about like it be more of a partnership rather than anything else, you know, because that's that just makes more sense because of we're, we're putting way more work into Kendama rather than playing Kendama, um, and uh, yeah, I'm super stoked about it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think I think Zach and I were have been really stoked for this. I've been really grateful for this opportunity to work with you and have it officially be announced finally. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's been really, really good to talk. Like we've said, so we've established a very great relationship with each other over the past, I'd say, especially over the past recent year, mm. I'd say. Um, and and you know, just like you said, it's more of a partnership than anything. I, I, I like to define it like this. We're not joining as just normal pro players, normal yeah. representations of the, of the team. And, you know, because I believe that Zach and I's role now in Kanama and especially and within the Lotus team is a little different. Yeah. It's not just we're just gonna, hey, we want we want free Kanamas and we're gonna we're gonna post tricks and, and just film tricks and then yeah, you know, practice super hard for this competition and go that and that's all we do. You know, there's there's people who play those roles a lot better than Zach and I now because yeah. Zach and I are in a different headspace, a different mindset. We have different goals what we want to do with Kanama compared to yeah. these other people who are strictly players, strictly there to do their job right here. Zach and I have been doing that role for 10 years. We yeah. believe it's time to take a different path. And we want to just help expand the game as much as possible. Just mm -hmm. like you said, we've we've all of us have put all of our marbles in this game in Kanama. Yeah. We want to see this thing explode. We want to see it grow more than anybody. We're really putting everything on this. And so I think when we saw that connection between all of us, we thought, wow, what a be what better way to, you know make this dream reality than to collaborate and work together because it's a lot harder to do it by yourself. And so, and then obviously, like you said, you know, Zach and I, we, we don't believe our role with gallery Kanama is to make Kanamas is to make the next best Kanama because there's already, we recognize that there's already people who care a lot more about that than we do based on the shapes and the, and the structure and design. And more importantly, those who can do it way, way better than us. Mm -hmm. And so when Zach and I started trying all these new shapes actually getting our hands on different things because we were playing only one shape uh, for very, very, for many years, we decided, okay, wow, not only does Isaac have this amazing mindset, amazing you know, vision for the future, but he also has this amazing shape that we like. <laughs> yeah. Very, very, very good. <laughs> and you collaborate with a lot of different companies, work a lot, work together with a lot of other Kanama people in this game, get a lot of people involved. And I just thought, wow, that's really, really amazing. So Zach and I reached, I think, I think, well, I think it came naturally, but we walk, we started walking towards that idea of partnership. Yeah. So I think our, our main goal, I'd say one of our main goals together, working together is just to push the game, push the sport to reach greater heights and not just sell the next, not just sell the next, you know, colorway, the next shape, the next thing, whatever. We want to put this whole sport emphasis on sport on an entirely new level on a worldwide scale. So hmm. I think, just us working together, we're, we're going to get there because Zach, Zach and I, you know, we have the same goal, but I think with us pushing, you know, raising these standards as canal players, giving mm -hmm. out these, you know, tutorials, like you give the these amazing tutorials, give such amazing value to the community. We are trying to establish a new community online right now within mm -hmm. our school, within G standards. We are trying to take this more of to a sport level, giving mm -hmm. mentorship access. And we want, you know, whenever going forward, we want to have Lotus there with us because we want to provide players with the best tools we possibly can wherever this goes and we believe right now that lotus has the best tools we can provide to those who are playing kanama seriously but also to those who 
want to get inter- or getting interested in Tukunama as new players now. Um, mm. So we just want to work together hand in hand, um, just like you said, on both of our individual goals and then our overall goals together. Yeah, so. for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think I think you know to go off what Nick said about the adding value to the community. I think it's so important for the um, growth of the of the sport of Kanama. You know, Isaac, Nick already touched on it. But you've been putting out these types of videos, these types of, giving your insights in these videos, and also now working, you've been able to put out a lot of very high quality, in depth tutorials, um, basically solving, adding adding your unique insights to people, and giving giving people you know what kind of info into what it's like to uh learn these tricks and learn the not only learn new tricks but to um i guess look at kanama in a deeper way look at kanama mm-hmm. in a way deeper way you know what you're putting out and give people i guess people give people like more awareness and permission to think about that you know because you're putting it yeah. out there for the public and then of course everybody wants to get better at tricks um and you're putting out these really high depth, uh you know high quality in-depth tutorials on tricks that are uh highly sought after mm. and then um i think this type these types of things you know you can like what, what we're saying you can put a lot of effort into doing a trick and then you know there's people like us who are who have been doing both and then doing yeah. that doing the trick and then adding value in this other way and uh helping to build the economic community up from from this aspect you know with our unique skills and our unique insights we all, all three of us have a lot of experience you know a yeah. lot of experience in hours of play and then uh events we've been to and a lot of experience within phenomenal into yeah, you know, spread that into spread our knowledge in these different these different modalities, whether it be YouTube tutorials, podcasts, whatever, interviews, whatever. I think it gives a lot more um legitimacy to the sport of Kendama, but it all and also helps a ton of or of a player who's who's whether it be you well know, within the first year in or or you know, eight years, nine years in. Uh there was definitely nothing like what we were doing, what what what's happening right now in Kendama, these these types of how we're helping people when when I first started. I mean, I wish there was, but there, there isn't there, there wasn't. So I, I'm just, I'm just trying to think as well too. like, what would I have liked in the, you know, my first year or two playing, mm-hmm. like think that would have been so valuable. And I think, um, the stuff we're doing now to build the community, uh, from within is will be absolutely crucial for the growth of it going forward. Um, yeah. which I'm really excited about. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there, there's so many other players in the game, like these big companies, sweets, Chrome, um like locks doing great things yeah and i think we all kind of have our own perspective on kanama we all have share the same goal of wanting to grow it and we are still going to like obviously work towards that goal but i feel like you, you know your guys's personality and your guys's um motivation and, and your uh idea of what kanama be and can be in the future like that certain specific perspective just aligns a lot you know really well with mine you know what i mean like i remember the one thing the one thing you kind of kept saying were like you want to make kendama look really cool you know yeah and i was at the time i was like well what, what does cool mean to you guys you know and and you guys like well give me some examples of certain players and stuff um and i've been yeah thinking about that and after just seeing like cup and just seeing these top, top players. I mean, just me personally, like everybody has their own like quirks and interests and, f- you know, ways of fulfillment. And for me, it's just like that progression and top level, like the top level competition. Like I'm watching the Olympics right now. And like, for me, it's just so fascinating and cool, you know? Um, and to to push that side like of course we're gonna I'm gonna be doing work with Lotus to get more people in like that necessarily necessary and there's certain companies like Sweets that have done such a good job with that and they're absolutely yeah. valuable, you know and uh, yeah I'm working with schools right now in Denmark and I'm gonna be doing like fairs and stuff because that that is vital for the community to to grow, but um yeah to have like an additional goal of like really pushing the sport of kendama you know you guys are with your accomplishments and your success in Kanama, you guys are perfect people to partner with, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Really excited. Really excited about this. And um, we did, yeah. The official announcement of the partnership at KWC was, was really cool. Dropped the yeah. new Kanama shape, new, new Kanama design. 
and um full length edit is going to be releasing uh really soon that we filmed in Denmark together. So yeah, uh, I think that's really cool. And um, I don't know if I I don't know, but maybe some people saw this coming. I mean, I'm sure some people did, but um, it was really cool to finally announce it. Um, yeah. and see some of Nick and I's really good friends in Kanama not not really see it coming. Yeah, that was sure. that, that, that felt good. That felt good to be like, all right, maybe it's not as obvious <laughs> as like maybe some people. Maybe I'm thinking it is, but uh. Um, yeah. I'm really excited for the announcement and, and the, yeah, the new Dom we made standard shape, um, mm -hmm. that was in the works since, um, yeah, we were, I remember I got the first March. prototype in March. Yeah. 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 I got the first prototype in March. Um, definitely took some, took some work to get to where it, get it to where it is today. Uh, yeah. and to launch it, we launched it at KWC, uh, with sticky and sticky paint. Um, it's, I really love the design. Uh, if you haven't seen the design, I mean, you can go take a look at Brothers Kanama's Instagram, but it's black and gold. It's the Gallagher Kanama colors. Uh, Isaac yeah. did an amazing job uh, actually putting the design together. It put an absolutely amazing pattern on top. So all the tracking super good. Um, the engravings we did were yeah, really unique, uh, I think. Yeah, it really and, symbolizes uh, kind of like what what a part of what we're looking to do, you know, with those engravings. Like mm -hmm. it's improving the playability of kendama you know so we threw engravings where your hand goes like zach you sent me the measurement of your fingers on the tama instead of doing like even uh engraved lines in the tama you we put it where your fingers go so when you spin you can feel yeah. those lines and then the same for the ken um there's only a few left in japan we're hardly selling them and there's a few in a glow kin shop and then 430 but we'll be doing obviously a restock really soon and uh, we decided to get that out to the world, but uh, yeah, I love I love this uh, uh, the creativity and yeah, just us aligning on like pushing the sport of of Kanama to uh, new standards. Yeah, uh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a it was an easy decision. I said it in the kind of the speech of KFC, but it was a. Uh... It was a no brainer for for Nick and I. Yeah. So um super grateful uh to be partnered with you Isaac. It's uh it's epic. So yeah, I, yeah. I really can't wait for the future. It's it's uh it's um I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. 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 I think something like this hasn't really been done. You're partnering with more of like I mean you're you're trying to make the absolute best kanamas in the world and you're partnering with people who are coming are coming to you as ex as I don't want to say ex players, but we're not coming to you as just a normal kanama company. Normal. We're trying to do right. something different. So it's yeah. it's almost just this perfect opportunity to align both worlds and both visions together. I don't think it's ever been done. I don't think there's ever been an opportunity to do it. And so yeah. I'm I'm just glad it's led to this. I it's it's really and, I, and to everybody listening and even to us right now. I mean, you're going to see a lot more of what we're going to do together yeah. in this next year and in, in the next coming future. Because I mean, we literally just started with this Kanama being released, and that's yeah one of thousands of things we're going to be able to do so mm -hmm. um, yeah i'm really really excited that's all i can say yeah yeah that. yeah me too yeah. Mm -hmm. um what should we shift to next we have a few things to talk about um yeah. have you guys uh just uh, actually a complete shift i'm glad we talked about that but <laughs> back to yoga uh <laughs> <laughs> have you guys played around with changing up your form at all after watching this kid at our kdbc house like i've just been staring i have a i have a video of him which i'll probably release in the uh, i did a really cool kdbc recap video that i'm so stoked about because like I, I was filming like his runs beforehand and then he all ended right. up winning so it's like a perfect documentary type thing that was sick yeah um but i i took a slow motion video in our kdbc airbnb and i have literally watched that video 20 times i think i watched it six times in the flight in slow motion. So it's probably 15 minutes long. And then I've watched it just like today. I just watch it every day. And it it's just so cool the way that he plays, you know, because starting going on a tangent, but like you never you didn't think that he'd be be able to beat Takia because he's not posting these crazy Instagram tricks to show his ability, but just his form and the ease of the, you know, the easiness, like how easy he can do these tricks, these top hard level tricks. Mm -hmm. It just has to go back to like what I've been saying for literally eons, his, uh, his form, his fundamentals, his technique. Um, so I've, I don't know about you guys, but I've been trying to spin the time of the other way. 
Have you guys played around with that? Or are you guys just sticking to your guns of what you know with the straight up clockwise spin? Yeah, I've I've, I've not <laughs> been doing that. Okay. I think I think so. So here's the thing. I mean, I do totally acknowledge that especially now that there are more <laughs> optimal ways to do different tricks of course yeah. and it's always evolving you know um nick brought up a great point he's like nick 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 and i were talking the other like last month and nick was like man i used to think i was like really good at juggles but it seems it seems like now i'm just like not even like top level of juggling and i was like well that's weird for you to say because you're obviously good at juggles but then i'm like right i get what he's saying now because i mean there's people like yasu ryoga takia who are just I don't know. The string doesn't exist for them. You know, I don't, I, I, they're, they're juggling in a way where it, it's like that. Yeah. There's some players like in the USA, like Ben Bryan, who's really good at juggling too, like that, you know, and, yeah. um, there's always going to be new levels to these tricks. Um, but I do think, um, I think a player has to really make that decision, especially if they're, the, so I think it's, it's much easier. It's much, much easier for a person to learn something, uh, than to unlearn it, you know? And, and so for what I'm saying, what I mean by that is where I'm getting to is, for a player like, let's say like myself, I've been rolling the Tama the opposite way of Ryoga for literally, quite literally <laughs> nine years. No, yeah. like nine years. And I do and the opposite way is the funny time. too. Like the I other do. way. Yeah. Yeah. The opposite way. <laughs> so yeah. that's nine years. God knows how many hours I put in yeah. to do, you know, single swap, double swap, triple swap, down spikes, juggling to still with the roll, airplane, jig, airplane, what are all this stuff. Yeah. Um, and I think a player has to be ready to make a decision uh, and see and deem if it's like worth it or not, you know, to, to change their form, um, for, for them. Cause it's not going to happen in like uh, a month, uh, two months or three months. Uh, realistically it might happen. It might take a year or more. I mean, who knows? I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't know, but I mean, I know with previous things in the past that if I've tried to learn something, it takes yeah. a long time. I mean, yeah. you can't, you can't disregard the fact of how much, how many hours I can't disregard the fact of how many hours and years I put into doing Thomas been the other way, you know, the, yeah. And, it's, yeah. and, and, and and the thing is, it's not even like a, it works for me and I get used to it. So I've gotten used to it and it works for me. I do know that the top player does it in a different way. But for me, it's like, do I want to spend so much time on learning this, breaking this habit of nine years ingrained into my body and to learn a, to learn a new technique and to, you know, have that gray period within that time of being literally so much worse at the trick I used to be so good at for you know, yeah. however long it takes until I get good at this optimal form um i'm not saying it's you know it's it's not you i think for a player to player that person has to determine if it's if it's worth it or not for me i played around with it in the past uh i realized i mean that even when i think about it super hard it's it's really difficult for me to do um yeah. so for me i'm i'm already i'm comfortable i i, I mean i like the skill i have with the swaps and the, the time roll i have i don't think it's um I, I, I like, I, I think it's working well for me. So um, I, I personally don't think it's going to be worth it for me to learn. Um, but that yeah. Thing, yeah. So for me, that, for me, that's what it is, but for other people who especially haven't learned that yet, uh, you know, definitely look into it. Uh, but, but, and before I go to you, Nick, like I, the reason that I'm kind of like practicing, I do like just today, I was just playing around with it, looking at it slow. Yeah. is because there's tricks that I don't have really consistent because of my technique you know mm -hmm. like of course i can do airplane 1.5 jug to bird but like my consistency just isn't there because of the technique that i have with the rolling like maybe you guys roll a slightly different we obviously spin the same way and you know that's a trick that you don't need to get better at necessarily you guys are you guys are like the best at that right um and when you and of course ryoga's it, it might it might look better like that specific trick might look better when he does it um, I bet your consistency is really close to like a one point, you know, just juggling to bird from like that Thomas spin, you know, but for me and probably for a lot of players, maybe around my level, um, like that's my technique. Uh, it's really good in a lot of ways, right? Like, you know, swapping back to airplane or something. Yeah. But I am struggling with a good, consistent time of rotation that goes straight, straight onto the stall. It mine kind of curves, right? Cause of the, cause of the way that I spin, so like, yeah, I could probably learn a, a, a new technique with the way that I currently spin to make sure that it goes on top. But like when I'm for tapping into a stall, the technique, like the, the negatives of the technique really come to light where like, it's hard for me to get a really consistent swap in, you know, and you guys don't ha have those challenges. So there's maybe not necessary for you guys, unless you guys want to like, just look 
like you play like Ryoga. Like there's not a huge goal of like, okay, I'm definitely going to get this trick more. Mm. Um, but yeah, what about you, Nick? What, what do you think? Well, I've definitely tried pr- changing my form before. <laughs> I mean, we've talked about, we've yeah. talked about, I mean, we've talked about it a yeah. couple months ago, right? I mean, back in March, I'd say we had this com- similar conversation and don't get me wrong when I play normally and when I compete, yeah, I'm, I'm not even thinking about changing my form. I yeah, thought the yeah. two things I've thought about, and I think I like, I like to do it because it's a new fun challenge for me as someone yeah. who's been playing for 12 years and needs, you know, and wants to keep enjoying Kendama. These are different, definitely better ways. And this is one way to enjoy Kendama in a different way uh, than I've been doing for the last 12 years. Um, it's altering your form and seeing what works and see how you, your movements adjust. Um, but yeah, spinning the time a different way. And obviously the second thing that I've really just kind of tried to do recently for fun is throw the Tama in a different space. Like where yeah, you can really see it when you when you look at Ryoga, he throws yeah more into him to his mm. chest. And Super also Ray yeah. Boy also does that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just something I've been I'm just like, oh, that's pretty neat. Like just trying to yeah. do that instead of me just doing my regular swap. Having to go a little out in front of me. Yeah. Um, just playing around with those. I think it's really fun. I, I'm not going to say I'm probably going to do that and work super, super hard on it. But yeah, I am going to play around with it. Yeah. I, it, it's just fun to experiment. Um, yeah, there, sure. there are, and yeah, there are just continuously evolving optimal ways to play. I thought I had the best ball control in the world at one point. Maybe yeah. I did. And then all of a sudden, dang, it gets, and you realize, oh, it gets better than that. Yeah. Even with just simple juggling, it's just like, wow. Yeah. And I, I think, I think we're so players like Zach and I, maybe people who grew up in the earlier era, maybe they're, maybe we have different habits because we learn juggling on a shorter string and we, we are confining ourselves in this smaller box on accident. Maybe even when we're yeah. switching to these longer strings, maybe. There's just yeah. Kinaba's in such a different place now. The the people just start off seeing ten finger strings. They just start off seeing Ryoga's form. And they're like, okay, that's just the way to do it. And yeah. I mean, my I noticed my tap form isn't optimal. I noticed so many things aren't optimal. Mm. And I'm just like, dang, I, I thought I used to be the the standard for a lot of these tricks. And then whoa, it just got <laughs> way more difficult. The ceiling just got way higher. So yeah. It's really cool that Kanama's still in that stage and of growing like that. And it's just it's such early stages, right? So, yeah. yeah. Anyway, and there's probably a yeah. new optimal way that's going to come out, you know? Oh, that, oh definitely. Oh, easily. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 It's, it's and just the way about, people yeah. swap, too. Just the way yeah, people that, swap. I was about to talk about that. They'll, yeah. Go, yeah. they'll go like they're up here and they go like that. Like that. Yeah. It's really hard to say and, and describe it over Zoom. Yeah. But, we all know we all know us three all know what I'm talking about. Just the way Nonoka swaps and the way this kid Yusuke swaps. It's just these random kids. I don't know Yusuke, but I know Nonoka, Ryoga, and Rui are the ones that come to mind with, with their swaps. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm I'm like I'm putting my Tama, I released from a little higher position, mm. making it now, now less optimal. Yeah. <laughs> these other people, right? Yeah. They throw from underneath. But even when yeah, they throw they, from underneath, the, the the ball comes perfect. And I'm just thinking, how do you do that? Yeah. How do you swap from underneath and get a perfect straight spin? Because it's just think I'm just thinking, all, all my whole life, I I thought you had to do yeah. it like this. Lob it up. Yeah. You, know, you had yeah. to like place it right instead of throwing it from a, beneath. You had to place right, it from above. Right, right. And I just, <laughs> I'm just thinking, what the is going on? So. Yep. And that and that I was gonna talk about that, Isaac. You said you know you mentioned your your form when it comes to some some certain tricks of ball control it's gonna you find some difficulty and some yeah some more like uh, harder harder tricks and you know i mean w- when you said that i was like yeah i mean that same thing i'm for me for these swap tricks uh, mm. when i swap when i release from a tap tap into a swap or you know these swap tricks that ryoga and nonoka can do so easily uh her level t- nonoka is level 10 is, great, level 10 uh, is example. a perfect example yeah uh they do that with ease i mean they literally 
do that. I saw I mean, she hit it three times around from my face. Ryoga hit probably like a round stall with that trick. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I have a video. Yeah, yeah, he and with with the ender to spike too. <laughs> yeah, like with the which is and then like, he did it to wing the next try. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. The, that type of swap team when they're throwing under when they're under and they're lobbing it up. Like I'm here, I look like a completely different player than them. Like <laughs> I look like a freaking spaz doing it. Honestly, compared to them, yeah. legit. Because yeah. I I literally I'll tap it up and instead of me, my Tom is right here. Their 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 tap release or like they'll swap release and they'll go like this. I'm I'm I, I tap it off or I release and I'm just like and I and I can't and my hand doesn't go down. It goes just up. It's like I, so I have way less time. So I'm like tap the tap, tap you know like that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? So it's it's totally. uh I noticed that on the level eight trick this year four tap swap bike. I was like oh, this trick should be easy for me, but it's like way harder than it needs to be. And then I look at these people who are really the optimal form and it looks like big cup spike. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's like their levels, their huge levels. So if I were to practice and redo my form on anything, it would be that for sure. For sure. And, and I don't remember, Zach, you were talking about struggling with the four tap swap because Nick is spinning it in. I just managed to learn like in three months, like Marcus was teaching me um, Sam Cannon's way of swapping, which is one of the OGs. You know, he's like really good at, it was really good at swapping back in the day. Um, but like Zach, if you, that, that would be a new learn. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. that wouldn't really be relearning if you maybe look at a specific trick rather than like relearning every time you go to a stall or to a right. spike from a juggle, you know? Right. Totally. So that could be easier like, to learn, you know? Yeah. Like I spin off, I've always spun off, spun off taps, but I've always known that if I can just drop it from a tap or like even get it to where Ryoga or Yonka does where you throw it under, I've always known that's so much better, but my muscle memory, I haven't con ever consciously worked on it. But it definitely intrigues me because it's so uh, it's so much better than the way I do it. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It yeah. looks better. Yeah, yeah. it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a few questions from my Instagram. Should we go over there? Yeah, let's dive in. So I asked my Instagram any conversation with the Gallagher's. What do I ask? I said parentheses anything. So we definitely got some interesting ones. Um, Hauenberg, I would love to actually know what the boys do outside of Dama for work. And another question was, do you guys make, are you guys doing Dama full time right now? So that's the same question sort of. Yeah. So G standard Gallagher Kanama, you know, is, is our main thing that we focus on. I personally had a part-time job up until well, I was working full time, and then I moved to Florida, and then I was working part time. Uh, and I click, I quit that in February when, um, around the a little after we started, we started this. Um, you know, I just thought to myself, if I, I feel like I'm, I'm half in, half out in this, and I can't make this succeed if I'm not fully in. Um, yeah. so I took the plunge, quit my job, and was like, all right, I'm all in. You know, forcing myself to, you know, if this doesn't. No, with no back. I don't want to have like a, didn't want to be like half in, half out and be like, okay, like, yeah, yeah well, I'm kind of doing this on the side. Well, it's okay if I, if I don't put enough effort here because I'm already, I'm already safe here. Like, no, I want a real change. Yeah. A real change to Kanama. And, and I couldn't do that if I was putting half my time in in other places. So, um, this is the, this is the main, yeah, this is the main thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same for you, Nick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Nick, you have a, yeah, Nick, you should tell your story yeah. about that. Oh, microwave's on. Um, yeah, real well, real quick. Um, and I was working at. Oh, his microwave is on. Okay, should should I just stop? <laughs> we're back. We're back. We're back. No, you're good. You're good. Microwave's off. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. No, I I definitely Zach and I wanted to go in on this together, and yeah, as you know, as most people know, I was working in Japan for a year and a half. I quit that job um, in Yamagata at, at Kanama Hero Bus Spike. Great learning experience, great growth experience. But I just felt like I, to put it simply, was meant for more and, and wanted to do something a lot more for Kanama. And so with this vision Zach and I had, I realized in order to go all in, I have to quit my job and, and move back and, and be with Zach on this because it's going to take every ounce of our energy and focus to do this and to make it succeed. And so, yeah, I moved back to the States in, in April and yeah, Zach and I've been doing this ever since it's, we've been, we really started trying and the, making effort toward this uh, last year in October, our very first steps there, but yeah, Gallagher Kanama became established 
um, at the beginning of this year in January. So yeah, uh, yeah. it's our full, yeah, it's just our full-time thing. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Um, so I got a lot of questions about, uh, diet. You guys want, <laughs> you guys want to hit those? I got sure. some funny ones about, uh, so Finn asked, and I'm not going to say everyone's name, but just for like the funnier ones, Finn said, are you guys going to play Timmy Tama, which is usually done with alcohol? Are you going to do it instead of alcohol, do it with meat? Or maybe like eggs where you can at least just drink the eggs. Would you guys I don't consider? even know what Timmy Tama is. So Timmy Tama is a really fun game, European game, where you have to do an uh you have to do an opposite bird and then spike it, and then you have a minute to do that and then also finish a beer. So maybe dozen eggs, maybe you can swirl them up, have a cup, and then have to drink. I mean, right? <laughs> or or blend what? or blend a steak into like <laughs> liquid it would have to be eggs but eggs yeah, I, don't okay. know, I don't know if i'd play that with people who i don't i don't know i, I probably yeah. wouldn't play it with people who are yeah, drinking yeah. alcohol <laughs> yeah Dude, i mean you like, would you definitely feel better in the morning yeah 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 and it would probably usually that game like it just becomes really bad at the end because no one can um oh. everyone's just really drunk so they can't do a yeah opposite bird spike yeah um what is your thought process about designing a shape and how they end up in Lotus? We kind of, yeah. What, what about the shape? Yeah. Maybe you guys can talk about that because we are kind of, kind of talked about Lotus already, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's this, a good one. The the one we designed. Yeah. 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 Um, definitely wanted to, yeah, come out with a new shape for our release. Uh, just our, it's just a symbolization for our partnership, something to kick the ball off, you know, kick, make, you know, officially announce and start our, start our partnership together. Um, so we decided to design this and working with Isaac on it. Uh, we already think the element shape is super, super good, um, but we just wanted something more unique to Gallagher Kanama and what we, our play style, uh, Zach and I's play style. Um, we still believe that, you know, we still are under um, construction of the shape. We still are trying to make improvements, but we yeah. believe right now what we have, it's suits our play style pretty well. It's, 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 very t it's a little bit tall and in the stall shape the stall points are very um, pronounced so mm. i i've definitely liked um kind of working to get to this point because yeah designing the shape is a little bit time consuming but i've honestly been very impressed on how fast we were able to whip this one up yeah uh, given, for sure you know compared to past experiences this one was super fast so yeah, yeah. um other, other than that, yeah, it's it's always fun to design a new shape. Just to, and like I said, this one's just to symbolize our partnership together at KBC. So, um, it fits our play style, and and a, and a, you know, so far so good with feedback. But Zach and I are definitely um, looking to make it better um, in the near future too. So, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Lot has a longer spike than the element. Um, mm. The hand, the swoop is there's a tiny bit of a swoop. There's a, a you can, it's almost unnoticeable, but uh, there's a tiny, it's, the swoop is way less than an element. Handle stall is a little, um, handle stall sits definitely better um, yeah. than an element in my opinion. And then of course the engraving lines um, on this Tama, if you can see three lines right here, three lines right here. This is where I place my fingers to roll the Tama um, when I go for any swaps. And yeah, the thing in mind we had when the shape was exactly what Nick said to kind of like care towards more of our style and, and a, a good challenge for us is, you know, to make the element shape, uh, to, you know, surpass the element shape, which is really yeah. difficult. You know, Isaac spent a lot, a lot of time making that shape to be as good as it is today. Um, Isaac, you said he prototyped it for like a year plus or something like that, or like two yeah. years, yeah, um, two which years, was, yeah. which is amazing. You know, now you have, you know, one of, if not the best pen shape on the market. Um, and you know, that that's our, that's the challenge that Nick and I have to make it, you know, see how we can make it even better than that. That's our standard that we're holding ourselves to. So. Um, we released a KWC, but for the online online release, I, oh, we're definitely going to be making some tweaks um, yeah. to get ready for you guys uh, for, you know, to have access to this worldwide. So, um, yeah, we're going to stick with the design, though. Designs, I, I love the design. It's so awesome. Yeah, but yeah, we'll make some 10 tweaks and, um, yeah, it'll be it'll be uh, available for everybody. Yeah, I feel like the last, the, pro, the newer shapes we did after the element, because the element holds up so well, they're all kind of inspired from the element. And then we just kind of took, like, 
um, at least for the the players on on the Lotus team, they kind of like were like, okay, I'm just gonna make the element more my style, and then it ends up being like a really brand new shape that feels really good. Um, like Marcus did that, Franta did that too, but Franta's shape is actually really unique. Like it's way more of a right. grain theory type shape. I love I love uh, all the shapes that we have, and then you know when I did I just did the Bloom recently. That's more of like a beginner friendly shape, inspired from the element, but it ends up feeling like really unique. Uh, this shape, the Gallagher shape, like at least for tap, you never know how taps are going to feel like, you know, uh, Marcus's shape just ended up tapping better than Francis shape for the most part. Of course, there's like some certain damas in a batch that like are godly at tapping for whatever reason. But I think in general, like bloom shape, Marcus's t shape, uh, the Mala shape are tapping, but this one ended up just like insane at taps, like as good as the other, yeah. maybe better, like it, something with the balance maybe you guys kept that balance of the element right um but then yeah i mean i think yeah with with your guys's goal is just to like yes yeah, but also I, I think for your style like the, the way that you guys play you guys do more silt tricks um you guys play a certain way and you want to make that your own um and even if we're taking like that that rough element sketch to begin with it's going to end up being like a completely different shape you know like um, because it's, 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 uh, yeah. I mean, if you, if you take a really good shape to begin with, and then you just kind of tweak it from there and you play it and it feels really good, uh, because of what you started with the element shape, like it's going to be a really cool shape, you know, unless you like really change things. Right. Um, but I'm super excited to work with you guys in the future on, uh, tweaking this shape. Um, I'm kind of leaving it in your hands of what you want to do. And it's like super gratifying for gratifying. Yeah. Super What's that word? Gratifying? Yeah, I think you have it. I got it. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna go exciting. Super exciting for me to try a new shape that that you know um, people people make out of the element shape because it's just yeah, it's just really cool. I love trying new shapes and you know whenever you try a new shape, like you play a little bit differently and right. you like notice some things, um, and then you'll like yeah find a trick that's like really good at that with that shape, you know, but, um, yeah. So I'm super stoked about, uh, the next tweaks that you guys do. And I'm really excited to, I'm going to do an unboxing soon with the current Gallagher shape that's in Japan. Um, or, yeah, the Gallagher mod, I should say. And, uh, getting like diving deep into that. Cause I really haven't, I, you know, I've been practicing for KWC for so long. I've just been using basically element and then Mars sometimes. So I like Mars for competition for it to shape. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to like sesh that at least for like a month straight and yeah, to, to really find the details of, uh, what, where, where we can go in the future. Yeah. Likewise. And yeah, yeah some, some tricks I've, I've just real quick, some tricks I've found that are really like, awesome highlights of the shape that do better than most other shapes. I mean, yeah. I mean, gave it to Rodney in, in, in Denmark, and he literally was hitting late stakes, 10 flips. The juggles were so clean. You know, Rodney's also a player who has insane juggle form. Like, he's so yeah. good at juggles, dude. It's, it's so cool. Um, But taps, juggles, 10 flips. I mean, this, this shape is really good at it. Stalls hit really nice. Um, And just, I mean, the juggles are actually, I think, particularly super, super good. I actually was doing a... um. I was trying to do as many inward juggles in a row to spike the other day. Uh, and I was doing it on the element. And I was like, okay, let me just switch to the standard shape. I'm pretty sure this is going to be easier. And uh, yeah, I was getting them way more consistent on that. And I ended up getting 15 to spike like, really fast um, yeah. on, on the standard shape. So uh, definitely going to, yeah, still looking to tweak it. But this, yeah, really, really good for tap shovels, kind of flips and stalls. So I'm really yeah. hyped about that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Another question. Um, straight out of left field, are they voting for RFK? <laughs> asking, now, asking Canal Politics. players who you're going to vote for for president. <laughs> I'm not going to uh, the air. You don't, you don't know? <laughs> yeah, I think it's mostly. Can I answer that question? On this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's, I think they're mainly focused on just uh, playing Kanama yeah. rather than like policy changes, you know? <laughs> um. So, okay, another controversy question uh how did you come up with the idea of giving dietary advices what expertise do you have and it's funny because you guys are actually no one knows this but you guys are doctors in 
uh, you guys are dietitians. So you guys did your master's and your thesis. And uh, so, yeah, everybody should just be eating steak. I know I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I feel like you guys, not to jump in, but like, maybe I'm wrong, but from my standpoint, you guys feel really good eating mostly carnivore. I mean, we were in Japan, you were trying some, you know, you had some rice and stuff, but for the most part, you guys just feel really good on carnivore and you guys just kind of go with it. And then you share that online because your online profiles are you and you aren't yeah. just posting tricks these days. Like it's a Nick Gallagher profile where you post everything yeah. that you do, whether it's traveling, food, whatever. Like, yeah, there's a lot of food, but you guys like food and you guys like the way that makes you feel. Um, did I get that right? Yeah. Yeah. I like to, <laughs> I like to share, um, I like to share what I like to eat and I like to share what works for me. Yeah. And so, yeah, I don't have any dietary <laughs> credentials. don't have anything like that. Uh, never said I did, but I do like to share my story and what's worked for me. And hopefully it can help people out there who kind of feel like they are in a place where they need some guidance, some help, and they are willing to take it from somebody who shared um, their own experiences and things that they've learned from what they've tried. And so yeah. you can, you can, if you want to try it for yourself or try whatever way of eating you want, I mean, go ahead. I mean, if you, if it's, if it turns out to be kind of like the way Zach and I eat good, great. We yeah. can help you on that journey. If not, that's okay too. Um, yeah. We just have believed that, um, this is the best we've, uh, realized we, you know, this is the best way of eating. We found in the past five years, ever since we started taking care of ourselves, um, a different level with fitness and training and, and eating and diet, all these things. So yeah, uh, we decided to, that it's too good not to share with the world. So <laughs> yeah. we're, trying to, yeah, we're just trying to share <laughs> and hopefully help others who are on that process or who even care to go down that path. Yeah. yeah. And, and the reason I, so I exactly what Nick said. I I share what has worked well for me. I can't speak to. I'm not about to say um, any 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 fact of the matter is like this is the blatant facts of life that carnivore mm -hmm. is like the way to go. You know, I don't think I've ever said that ever. I have said that for me in my life, it has been yeah. a very profound discovery. Um, and you know, I'm very passionate about um, you know, health as the reason I'm so passionate about it is because it has had a, a, an amazing impact in my life. I used to be so like a, a summary real quick. I used to be have a, a really, really horrible relationship with food and exercise. Um, I was orthorexic. I literally fully, uh, I was very, very unhealthy and skinny and, 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 mm -hmm. you know, like past the, not, not, not like normal skinny, like actually unhealthy, like not eating like straight up. So, yeah. um, and you know, I, when I started to work on these things and, uh, it changed my life around. Like I'm as I'm basically as passionate about this as I am Kendama like, or else, or it gets really close. Yeah. Um, if you really know me, you, you probably know that. Um, and so for this to have such an impact on my life, I, I know that I'm not special, you know, I'm not a special, mm -hmm. I'm not a, I'm not like an anomaly. I know this can work for other people. So I like to share my experience and to share what I like to do in hopes that, you know, maybe it'll help someone else too. Just like how it helped me, just how I saw it for the first time. And that's all I'm trying to do here. Um, mm -hmm. Some people, obviously it's, it's not the norm. It's uncommon. And people can, people have the choice, you know, neglect it and whatever. Maybe I know some people have very, very opinions about it. Um, but at the end of the day, my intention is generally to help people. And it's help help because it has helped me so much. I know that because it's helped me, it's, it can help uh, many more people. And, you know, and unfortunately uh, there are a lot of, companies and and systems in this world that are working really hard to make us um not dead not healthy but sick and sick for the rest mm -hmm. of our entire lives and they're making mm -hmm. billions of dollars off that you know so that's what the norm is nowadays uh where you yeah. put in like in like legitimately any country and so um i think it might be challenging to break out of a norm and go go to something like this um but i challenge people to you know open your mind and you never really know if it's going to work or not if until you try it um and there's a lot of social proof in other other ways and up to you if you want to do up to you if you want to try it or not but uh i like to challenge people to expand their minds a bit and you know give it a yeah. shot see how they feel and then they, make it, then they can make the decisions for themselves I'm not going to say it works for everybody but it's worked for me and i know it can work for other people yeah and it's not like if you see somebody eating straight up vegan or like only potatoes every day and if they claim that they feel super good on it 
on this diet that you're like, no, this is not the way you're like, okay, that, that makes you feel good. Yeah. That's, I that's can't, cool. I can't deny. I'm not going to just, if someone says that I'm not going to say, actually, no, you don't, you know, yeah. I, I don't, yeah. I'm not them. I'm not yeah. them. You know, I talked to, yeah. you know, Torque Old May has been, used to be the owner of Compton Dama and he's been vegetarian for like literally like over a decade and he's yeah. seemingly super doing super well. So I'm not, I'm not about to tell him like, like, Hey man, yeah. you're actually not, you know, uh, there's there's stuff to figure out there um but i have my opinions about that and stuff and based on my experience with with, yeah. with you know trying and um but i'm not about to just disrespect somebody because of that you know i'm not gonna be i'm not i'm never i'm always gonna be respectful towards these for, towards your towards anybody you know um just in general yeah. like outside of outside of you know just diet or whatever but uh yeah it doesn't determine it doesn't mean like you're a type of person to me it just means you eat that way uh that's just yeah. one thing so for sure yeah, mm -hmm. yeah and it, it's crazy where like i feel like if you went back to like i don't know how i mean i just don't know anything about history of diets but i can imagine people were eating way healthier than all the corn syrup that's in american foods and all the sugars in american foods these days um and if you went back like 300 years and just to see our recommended meals for breakfast lunch and dinner like it would just be like what is going on you know and yeah like yeah i mean i would consider you guys your diet is pretty radical if you're if you're literally i mean i know you guys are kind of in and out of like strict carnivore with like just salt and steaks and then you open up to yourself to like fruit yogurt whatever but like even if you are pretty radical about it you're still pushing in a way away from what everybody can agree on is unhealthy food, you know, anything like, better I, than the norm. Of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and <laughs> with Torkel, anything. like <laughs> Torkel's vegetarian, but I think for the most part, he's eating whole foods. He's not eating like I mean, yeah. processed the ve uh, vegetarian, like frozen egg rolls. You know what I mean? Like, like he right. went to NKC and he brought a bunch of fruit, like sick, yeah. you know? Yeah, and beast. you guys respect that. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, but then there's foods that like everyone can agree on. It's just like donuts that are just not healthy. And um, you're not, yeah, I think you'd be stoked if people started eating like you, but I think you'd also be stoked if people just started eating more whole foods and just yeah. less processed. I mean, I'd just be more, I mean, yeah, exactly. Exactly like what you said. I mean, the, if, if they want to give this, what we're doing a shot, I mean, I think that's amazing because you really are, it's not that, like you said, it's radical. It's going against the norm and um, it's, it's societally viewed as like, really really odd you know yeah um but i think the whole thing about this i mean if nick and i can help people become more intentional like that, that with what they're eating no matter what they eat, you know i think that's that's something that i'd be really happy to happy to do you know and i hope i mm. can do that with what with mm. what i'm sharing so um just the intentionality really yeah because a lot of people aren't like actually the yeah. high majority of people just really aren't so no. yeah i've definitely explored my diet i haven't had any like crazy situations that you guys have, have had where like you were eating really poorly and then you really felt like shit. Like I've had a pretty healthy, um, like growing up in my house, we were relatively healthy, like that many sugar cereals. We had no soda and stuff. Um, but I do notice that like, and I, I've explored vegan. I've explored, I was vegan for seven months or so. I was vegetarian. I was exploring different diets. Um, I was eating no fat at some point to try it out because I saw some guy talk about it. You know, I just wanted to see for myself. And now I'm just kind of basically eating whole foods. That makes me feel the best. Um, but I, I I do notice that if I only have, of course, it's just me talking. But like, if I want to go play Kandama after my meal and I eat like a big bowl of pasta or like some of my favorite dishes like pizza and stuff, it's hard for me to go out and play and be like honed and be like have have high energy and sometimes i want like i want to just like relax and watch a movie and i'll have like indulge in pasta or whatever but like if i have like steak and like beef in the morning like i don't feel that fullness of like me not being able to play kendama and like me having to take a break like i just feel like i'm just can just literally just walk away and just start playing like it gives me some kind of like i think you talked about it one time like the uh you feel like satiated like satisfied instead of like overwhelmed, you know? And I feel like that's, that I, I can say that I'm, I'm definitely not carnivore, but um, I see the benefit there, you know? I for sure see like the benefit of just like, if I don't eat a bunch of grains or bread or whatever, I don't have that 
super full feeling, you know, I'm like satisfied. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, I, I think Zach and I can resonate with that too. I think, um, yeah, just switching from, I guess, I guess, I guess Zach and I never really ate super crazily bad either, but I guess, yeah, just switching to this more eating right, real foods, just yeah, exactly exactly like you said, just provide us more energy. Um, yeah. And just yeah, translates well with Kendama. So yeah, it's been good. Yeah. Cool. So I got a, uh, we got like two or three more test. Nick has some Japanese. I mean, if you watch like a video, do, is there videos out there of what? Nick just absolutely slaying Japanese? Like it's actually insane. I talked about it with him. Who asked over, that question? Uh, Chandler Gant. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, I don't think he's okay, ever, well, he's obviously never been. A yeah. He doesn't. Oh. Yeah. Cause it's, it's crazy. Like Nick's progression in Japanese is actually super inspiring because I'm trying to learn Danish right now. And the fact that you went from in adulthood, like not taking a Japanese class to like going on the KDBC stage and just fully presenting Japanese is so impressive. I've told you this a million times, like, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, definitely, definitely still, still studying, but yeah, um, I guess I'll just release a lot of content in Japanese this year and you can yeah. just kind of yourself. yourself. But, yeah. but there are people who say like, oh, you must be Japanese, right? Like people l listen to your Japanese and how fluent you are. And they're like, like you don't have an accent or? Uh, it depends on this. I mean, yeah, it depends on the situation. I'm not, I, I don't really, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to talk about the level I'm at. Cause I, for me, it's like, I still have a lot of studying to do and I'm going to be studying for a long time, but I'd say yeah. I've gone to a good spot. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, yeah. I can, yeah, I can exist here. For, yeah. For okay. You. Yeah. He's being humble, Chandler. He's a, he's a beast of Japanese. Um, <laughs> so we got like I felt I felt like I saw one more that was good. Do you miss cushion clear? I feel like you guys still play right cushion here. clear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, yeah, yeah. I still um, play cushion. Actually, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've been playing cushion for. Ever even like even after leaving sweets, I was still playing cushion. It was like my main paint. Also, that's primarily because I had like obviously the only paint I had, but I still think it's good. I just yeah. now am exposed to better paints. Yeah. Simply what it is. So I prefer other paints now. Um, but if I get a good cushion, like I'm still playing that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for sure. Yeah. And option. like and even with my like Lotus team, like they I kind of urge them to play whatever is the best because right. that just kind of tells me that I don't have the best, you know? So there were players, you guys, uh, me, like I'm, I'm, I'm sometimes playing a really good paint, like a Dow origin origins paint. You know what I mean? Like the, the Raptor clear, cause it's so good. And um, I have like good rubber, good factory sticky with Lotus, but the Raptor hits, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's not this strict thing about like when Marcus competes, he has to use uh, all Lotus. I just want, you know, everybody associated with Lotus, including you guys, to play, obviously, to just to play whatever is best, whatever you're going to do best in that competition. Um, and then I can kind of take my notes, you know? And luckily, yeah. you guys are all, I, I feel like, yeah, Ryoga, we had like a lot, so many element shapes on the, on the leaderboard, which was really happy to see. For me so um well uh, this is the last one this is a really good question what and i definitely have something to say about this um it was something about the age of kendama um what is the age when you stop progressing <laughs> what uh... i feel like that could be like a common belief because i think that there is i mean there's definitely science around it but uh you see kids just like picking up languages picking up sports like so easily and so quickly um i haven't really uh, read the science so i'm kind of talking like i wouldn't I, I would even whatever the science says honestly i don't think i think it's a I don't think the science would support like, oh, you can't progress to something. Like, yes, for yeah. sure. Like, for sure. If you learn something as an yeah, adult, like, sure. like a language or something, like that. Like, I think maybe Donald players. Yeah, it's something I've never really thought about. Uh, maybe it's because of my mindset. I, I don't know my, my experience growing up. I started when I was a you know twelve year old or eleven year old. 
Um, but maybe some of these, yeah, maybe some players really do think that it's impossible to get to a certain, like get to progress faster or to progress at all because of their age, or maybe they're like, oh, you know, I'm once you get older, it's harder to learn new tricks. You know, I'm, I'm whatever, 30, I'm 40. Um, yeah, I think that's just like, I don't like that at all. I don't like that at all. No, it's that's that. not, it's me such neither. A limiting, I started at 21. It's such a limiting belief. Yeah, <laughs> it's such a limiting thing. It's like, oh, my, all these kids are the best and they like they're, they're all 12, 14, and whatever. It's like, yes, like, do, do, can kids learn stuff? faster than than adults um generally with maybe cognitive skills like depends on your back as an adult depends on your background but like yeah overall generally like maybe yeah like probably like learning languages like yeah it's more natural you know for as kids like whatever doesn't does not mean at all you can't what, what is it what is the age you stop progressing no like you can no. continue to progress and yeah. continue to work on these skills for for your life and it doesn't matter like i think when people ask that question they're they're also asking questions like well how fast can i how fast can i progress you know, how fast can I, well, it, it just matters to you. Every person's individual, you know, it's not like if you put in, it's not, it's not, it's not a blanket statement that if, for example, you put in two hours on uh, stilts when you're going from double stilt flip to triple stilt flip that each player is going to have the same level of proficiency after those two hours, you know, everyone's different, you know, everyone's going to learn at a different pace, um, but it, it's up to you. It's really the answer yeah. lies like what age do you stop progressing in Kanama? Like that's just legitimately up to you. It's, it's mm-hmm. up to you to answer. I mean, it, you, you stop progressing when you stop playing. Um, yeah and you stop playing with intent you know it's it's really that's really it's really that simple it has nothing to do whether no matter what speed you're at uh your control of if, if whether you progress or not use it at the time then um and it doesn't matter what age you are there's a person there's a player who comes and, and competes at kfc who's like 90 90 i don't know but she yeah. she's old okay she's old she's like 90 <laughs> yeah. in her 90s all right and she comes back every freaking year all right and she can maintain start, a skill level yeah. if she can maintain a skill level at 95 yeah. i'm pretty sure she can progress at um who, sure. whoever's probably asking is probably 20 or 30 you know mm-hmm. or who's in their 30 maybe even if for 40s it really doesn't matter no yeah i, I mean I, I feel like people would be able to quote like oh you have more like neural plasticity from the scientific paper um when you're young and that's probably true but like when it comes to kendama i my you know your brain is fully developed at 25 i went from four tap to ten tap at 25 right like at, at least for kendama oh. like okay maybe maybe not I can't like, I, I know like if you, if you learn a language later in life, you won't be able to like fully get it fluent because you can't say these certain things, but that probably has some really specific like neuro linguistic, you know, brain mm. stuff going on. Um, but like at least for Kendama, I think the biggest issue of adults not progressing quicker isn't that their brain is more, I think plastic is the term but where you can like learn things quickly. It's just that they believe that they can't do it. You know, like if you believe you can do it, and that sounds so cheesy and cliche. No, but it's but literally hundred percent true. true. Like, like, like yeah. yeah, like it's it's easy well, to pigeonhole yourself. Oh yeah, go ahead, Nick. I think it's just honestly at the end of the day for everything, it's a lot easier to kind of. I mean, everybody knows what they have to do. Just put yeah. in the work, put in the practice. Like everybody knows that. Yeah, you already know that, and I think it's honestly a lot easier to look at it in a frame where you're in control of the factors you can control. And then it's, it's just a lot easier to be, to be in that position rather than to be the victim and someone who, you know, is have these limiting beliefs like, Oh, I can't do this because you know, it's already written. Like I'm already this age or yeah, I don't have as much time as them. I can't progress. It's just not possible for me. You know, I, mean, I can't yeah. cause it's me. It's just a lot easier to take control of your situation and just take responsibility for everything. It's just, a, yeah. it's, it's more easier. Like yeah. it's really, <laughs> um for everything so yeah you might not be able to progress as quickly as a 10 year old who is a child and who has no homework or who has everything cooked for them yeah yeah of course you're not gonna be able to progress quickly that's based on hours it's based on hours it's not based because they're putting in they're putting in hours maybe because they're a kid they pick up something faster than you good for them you know you can still progress yeah it's gonna look a little different and it looks different for everybody so i mean it just comes down to hours put in. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right, that's it with the questions. So next event, when will I get? I, I'll see you at NAKO, I guess. Yeah, NAKO. NAKO, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Super stoked about that. I wonder, I guess the tricks will be coming out to, is usually a Hopefully month before. Soon. You think uh, soon? Oh, like yeah, September. maybe. Well, maybe okay. like in a month. Yeah. Exciting. Hopefully, hopefully in September, yeah. 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 And... um. Yeah, it's it's you know this year at NACO, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. Hopefully Maharo can come out. 
yeah that's, that's all right. i know that's in the works ryoga too yeah. hopefully i don't know yeah um, yeah for sure yeah so uh excited to see that um and you know nick and i have been discussing it's going to be interesting to yeah nick i think we're about to wrap this up but uh i think it's gonna be interesting this this nako you know one thing on my mind after kwc we've been talking about in this podcast it's it's a it's a huge different it's a whole different mindset of of going to um an event and practicing all day for it and wanting to you know, go and win versus the person who has an experience who's like yeah, i'm going to socialize gonna have fun whatever it's completely two different completely different experiences um i am definitely considering trying this out in aco because i've never actually gone to a comp without the intention of doing really well i've mm. never literally never <laughs> yeah ever, comp day you guys are just locked ever, in the corner in my yeah. in my entire life of competing over the past events i've competing over the past 11 years ever i've never done that Wow. Um, but I do, I do want to try not to, not to just go to events, just like do nothing. I mean, this is about so bad way of putting it, but like do whatever, just socialize and just like talk and whatever. And I, I saw, and obviously I enjoy that, but I'm thinking about going to NACO and still competing, but not really practicing and just mm-hmm. trying to do stuff as much for, for as much for gallery or Kanama as I possibly can. Yeah. Whether it be interviews, content, all these things, making um, videos showcasing the actual uh, epicness of Kanama. That's something that I, I feel like if I want to really pull my, put my full effort into, then all those hours preparing for the competition and especially day of, especially mm. day of, um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just not possible to do both, you know? No, it's, and it's I've never completely tried. contradictory. It's completely contradictory. So that is something I'm definitely contemplating for this year's NACO uh, to try out. Cool. Um, and yeah, just we'll see what happens. So it could be a new experience for me. And obviously I want, if I were to do that, I would give my all to give to make as much amazing things I can out of that uh, as possible for the community. Yeah. Yeah. I know Nick's been thinking about that too, but basically it's, a, it's within me and I know Nick too, to, to compete and do well. It's just within yeah. us. So uh, it'd be, yeah. But I, I do want to try give that a shot though. Yeah. At one event. For sure. Nick, you have anything to add? Nick, do you have anything to add? Oh yeah. It, it, it froze. <laughs> okay. Um, like Zach said, and going forward, like I, I, I couldn't answer about KDBC next year because this reason. I think, as a player, as a professional player, I've done a lot of things, and in order to make this new vision, this new dream that Zach and I, and then not only us now, but you, you have, and we're all working together towards this. It's time to put. It may be time to focus our efforts on different things. And that just might mean not preparing for competition like we always have these past 10 years as, at the pro level. And that's okay. That's something I I couldn't sit well with for a little while. I don't know when my last competition I'll try at will be at will be. It could be it could be NACO. It might it might already have been KDBC, you know? So mm. it's it's just kind of a new era. Not I don't want to say new era. It's not, but it's just because it's just for Zach and I, but it's just this new role that Zach yeah. and I are stepping into it. and i know it's gonna happen it's not like we're gonna go try this and go back to no we're just gonna play and just try and compete to win because and in reality it's like when when zach and i have accomplished as much as we have i mean we don't we, we are okay with the fact to go to go this direction and but it's also when you think about with what we're trying to do and and grow the sport of kanama it's like with us winning or us grinding super hard to place and and win how does that really help us at all Hmm. Like, does it really provide as much value compared to what we could be doing if we put our efforts towards what Zach was just saying, trying to present hmm. the present the field of Kanama, present how cool it really is, sharing that online, making our efforts leading up to the event and also day of coverage. I mean, what's really the bigger pay? What's really the bigger right. payoff for the future of Kanama? Yeah. Is it the first place under my belt? Probably not. You know? Yeah. Just not gonna be. Yeah, well, it's pretty selfless of you guys. So that's really cool. Yeah. I mean, you guys are really going to give back to the community and it'd be awesome to see like a training regimen or something beforehand mm-hmm. or yeah. a Gallagher booth selling tank tops and salt. Is that, is there an opportunity there? <laughs> Maybe merch, way. merch, merch is uh, definitely, on, okay, uh, merch, okay. definitely, yeah. in the, really definitely on the way for sure. But, uh, um, Dates, yeah. selling... <laughs> I love that. Oh my God. That'd be so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No, but you can expect a lot from Zach and I and our collaboration with Lotus this, this next year. And yeah, hundred yeah. percent. It's awesome. gonna look different than yeah, everything we've done. So yeah. 
Awesome. Well, I uh, really enjoyed talking to you guys. We're going to do this again soon, I imagine. Um, yeah, I feel like we covered a lot. It was awesome talking about Cup. Um, got a few yeah. controversial questions out there, which is uh, fun. And uh, yeah, excited to see you guys again. Um, let's keep in touch, obviously. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, well, thanks for listening, everyone. Um, so yeah, I'll see you guys later. Thanks Thank for tuning you. in, guys. Peace. Thanks, Isaac. Peace.